Uh, can you uh, get sound out of me? That helps with just that. friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other check, social one, two, media check, accounts check, like check. Facebook and I can hear you. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and share your love. Well, he would have sound on the... Uh... Download the Small Player, Big Play app today. Well, it, it would be playing through the, um, the commercial. You'd hear the sound of the commercial. Uh, it's not even only commercials. Video or audio too? Vi just video. Okay. So what's up with the uh, the audio? Attention parents and coaches. Do you wish you had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes? Fortunately for you, there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that. Introducing Small Player Big Play. Small Player Big Play app provides young athletes, parents, and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform. The app allows users to connect with friends, make new friends, create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and share your love of sports. Heavenly Father, we ask for your blessing upon these young men as they compete under your guidance and protection. Grant wisdom and understanding to their coaches and trainers. And for those in attendance, may their enthusiasm 
be filled with respect for all. We ask these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please join us in celebrating America's freedom and to honor all those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Please remain standing if you can. Gentlemen, please remove your headwear for the playing of our national anthem. <laughs> Welcome to BCTV Friday Night Football. Wow. First time I'll ever say that. Bruce Badgley, Kerry Moore. We made it. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, one of those times where, uh, you know, the duct tape and bailing wire really uh, was appropriate. Hey, we're ready to go. And how awesome is this? Bringing high school football back to cable television in Berks County on BCTV, Bruce. I'm, I'm jacked. Yeah, I'm really happy the fans of Berks County. I mean, something they've deserved for a very long time. Not only the fans, but the teams, the coaches. Uh, you know, great for football here in Berks County. And looking forward to a great game. Berks Catholic, Exeter, it's turned into a real grudge match these last couple of years. Absolutely, and we're ready to go. It's go time, Bruce. All right. Kicking off. The Eagles, number 19, Josh Cupid. Josh Cupid getting ready to kick off for Exeter. Burks Catholic to receive. Looks like Abdul McFoy, no surprise there that he's back there. Carry one of the dynamic players in Burks County. Burks yep, County. nope, absolutely. And uh, one of the keys to the game I'll talk about here, and we'll see if uh, Exeter kicks to him. Uh, the kicking game for Exeter, uh, two kickers I'll talk about here, is a, a definite positive. And they obviously don't kick to McFoy. Still in it, and he ends up with the ball. Oh, look out. Oh, my gosh. All right, out to the 22-yard line. Yeah, they attempted to uh, squib it there, and, uh, you know, it got through those first couple guys and got to uh, McFoy, and uh, here we go. Burke's Catholic, Catholic on all, offense. They got it. I mean, uh, going to be very interesting here. Burks Catholic on offense now. Of course, head coach Rick Healy in his ninth season here at Burks Catholic, 88 and 16, 33rd season overall, 250 wins to 135 losses and three ties. All right, quarterback number seven, Ryan Madrick to McFoy. Dancing, juking, not a whole lot. It's kind of a story that developed here during the week uh, with, with Madrick in the start. Of course, uh, Parks Catholic scrimmaged uh, Governor Mifflin here on this field on Saturday. And, uh, you know, injury to a quarterback there, uh, sophomore quarterback Brad Hoffman. And uh, he's not uh, he's not able to play this week. So we got Ryan Madrick, 6'1", 181 pounds at quarterback. All right, in motion. And in the backfield, ooh, nowhere. Yeah, just uh, a lot went wrong with that play. 
J.R. Strauss on the stop. Yeah, he did a nice job. You know, even without the flags there, the penetration by Exeter's defensive line. Strauss there, nice job. Uh, and, you know, uh, penetration kills uh, you know, plays before they even start. Yeah, Nolan Larkin really uh, didn't have any chance to get anything going on there with that penetration. No, and uh, saw him at the scrimmage this week, and that, uh, that young man has some wheels. He can fly. I think we're going to talk about him some more as we go through tonight. But, again, the story this week, Ryan Madrick uh, at the quarterback for Burks Catholic. Uh, need to see some new playmakers rise up here for Burks Catholic. I'll talk about that more in a minute. All right, third and long, third and 14th, 14. And they give it Larkin again. Very conservative call there, Kerry. Obviously the first series of the year. Uh, just trying to get the legs underneath these guys. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's tough when you've got third and long. You know, you're kind of pinned up, uh, you know, in your own red zone there. You don't want, at this stage of the game, you don't want to get, you know, too, too creative there and uh, end up turning over the ball that close to your own end zone. All right, point of emphasis always for us. Special teams, here's Savala back to punt. Good kick away, right to the center of the field. Fielded there. That's number 41. Initial hit Nick Schaefer. Number 55, Randy Tobel. Yep, Nick Schaefer's uh, going to be a key component here for Exeter in the return game. Exeter coming up for their first series on offense. Uh, Exeter Township Eagles, of course, they're first a 5A team. Uh, they're under head coach Matt Bauer in his 11th year, 68 and 42 is overall record. Back in 2018, last year they were four and two in the league, third in Burke section one, six and five overall. So we're going to see uh, quarterback junior here, Gavin McCusker, number four, six one, one seventy. Uh, some quarterback competition throughout camp, and uh, McCusker was getting the nod. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through. Yokum and Nixon. Nixon's got the ball right up the gut. About eight Jeremiah yards there. Yeah, Jeremiah Nixon, uh, you know, I know you'll probably be a part of the return game possibly here too, but uh, nice job. You know, another guy uh, I'm anticipating we'll see will be uh, you know, J.R. Strauss, who did a nice job on the D-line there earlier at running back as well. In the shotgun, and there's Nixon again, breaking free. First down. Inside the 20-yard line already, Kerry. Yep. Excuse me, inside the 30. It's a great job. And, uh, you know, one of the things we talked about in our Section 1 preview show this week was, you know, this offensive line stepping up. You know, of course, they had, you know, uh, McNish last year. He's now up at Bryant. Um, you know, Zabala, who's at Wilkes. You know, another lineman they had, Philip Pell, who's out at IUP. So we have to see some of these guys step up. I know they're counting on Unruh. And... Uh, Nixon again, two. trying to pick his way. Positive uh, yards on all three of those run plays here so far. They've had some room to run early on, that's for yeah. sure. We talked about this in our Section 1 preview show this weekend. You know, the offensive lines uh, averaging 6 foot, 263 pounds. And, you know, really I think, you know, two keys there, two seniors, left guard, Nate Brady, number 79, right tackle, number 16, Robbie Unruh. Well, the great thing about the Exeter Eagles is that you can tell the numbers on the backs of the players <laughs> with yep, the blue nope. on white. The, the blue stands out. And, uh, you know, I think we're uh, you know, going to spend some time talking about Javier tonight, too. I'll talk more about him in that. Absolutely. And that looks like Yoakum. Now it's oh, Nixon, Nixon again. again. It's four run plays in a row. Number 73, Jackson. Run inside the tackles. Landon Lutz with the tackle there for BC. So, uh, their defense really on their heels, Kerry. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, that's, you know, you, you give your O-line some confidence, some opportunity to establish some dominance here early on, getting that first down with, you know, two snaps the first time. Now we're sitting here with uh, third and four. McCusker back to throw. Looking and caught. That's number 23, Devin Scott, I believe. And a flag. Yeah, and uh, that's going to be a, a personal foul penalty here, you know, on uh, on BC. Uh, you know, it wasn't anything like super malicious, you know, uh, but again, you know, just that late hit afterwards here, just unnecessary and kind of just backs you up more uh, against your own goal line here. So we've seen uh, Nixon, you know, carrying the ball so far. McCusker there, nice, uh, nice completion to Scott. 
We haven't seen uh, Javier yet uh, touch the ball. Of course, uh, there's you know a lot of times he could be a best athlete on the field. You know, he's a senior, 6'2", 175, uh, incredible hoops player here in Berks County as well. Uh, look for him isolated out on the left here. McCusker, Nixon now around the end. He's got some room, and he is in for the score. No, that was a nice six shot. yards. Nice job by Exeter there. They're pounding the middle. You know, take the ball down the field around left end that time. In for the score. First one's on the board. Nothing better to start a season than a touchdown drive. Exeter Eagles in for six. Six to nothing. 8.06 to go. Nixon had 38 yards on that opening drive on the ground. Or excuse me, 28 yards on five carries. 25, Sean Henry. Up and good. It is good. Exeter That's seven. Great First drive there by zero. Exeter Township. Sean Henry, uh, senior and 6'1", 200 pounds, kicker, punter. He will be handling the extra point and field goal duties for Exeter tonight. You had the whole one? That's the same thing for Imperial. Imperium Management Services provides the shared service offerings to affiliates, allowing these entities to advance their mission and vision. Shared service offerings include, but are not limited to, fiscal reporting, payroll information technology, human resources, employee recruiting, employee training, risk management reporting and analysis, and time and attendance. Conveniently located at 3929 Perkyovan Avenue in Reading. Imperium Management Services, our title sponsor, Imperium this year, Kerry. Um, can't thank them enough for everything that they've done to get Friday Night Football on the air. No, absolutely. And uh, again, you know, big thanks to uh, Imperium and uh, putting uh, high school football back on BCTV, back on cable television right here in Berks County. All right, McCoy back deep, kicking off is number 19, Josh Culpit. Yeah, again, uh, two great kicker punter guys here in Berks County with Cupid and Henry. Henry, of course, extra points and field goals, and uh, Cupid kicking off, and he'll also do a punting dude for extra. And, uh, <laughs> he just booted it right out of bounds. Yeah, so I, I get it. You want to try and keep the ball away from McCoy. It's, you know, one of my keys to the game, you know, the trying to keep those all-purpose yards down McCoy, but, uh, you know, the first kickoff, they squibbed it, got down. He got the ball anyway, but uh, kicking it out of bounds. You're just giving uh, giving yards to BC to start this drive with. Yeah, good field position. Let's see now. You know, let's see if BC's got their legs under them, uh, Madrick especially. Yeah, it was kind of tough. They, they kind of just got on their heels, you know, from the get-go that last uh, series, their first series in offense. So plenty of time. We've got eight minutes left here in the first quarter. Of course, Exeter taking that, their opening drive down. They're up 7-0. But uh, Berks Catholic just needs to take their time here. No, no uh, reason to panic and uh, put a drive together or get the, uh, the ball out to your playmakers in space and let them, uh, let them do their ball thing. Going to be interesting to see whether they go to the pass so early on in this game. But uh, <laughs> I was here at the scrimmage on Saturday with uh, uh, Brooks Catholic and Governor Mifflin. Of course, we were both over last year, Governor Mifflin, when they did, and the, the intensity was great. Brooks Catholic actually opened with a pass during the scrimmage. Madrick. There's Mc uh, McFoy. Nice job no, up front. That was not. That was number eight, Colby Newton. Nice job by the uh, BC offensive line there, getting uh, forward push, and uh, again they're they're back into the second level. Now you're sitting here with a second four. That's uh, you know those positive Correction, yards. That was you know, number eight, Colby Newton, the ball carrier. Getting those positive yards opens up your playbook for you here. Okay, Newton and McFoy behind Madrick. This time it's McFoy. He's got a little bit of space. He's got the first down. That was a nice job. Of course, you know, you know, the, the talk is always about McFoy and when he gets in space as a playmaker. But, uh, you know, that, that was close to the, uh, the yard marker there. And, uh, you know, he kept his legs moving, got a couple extra tough yards, uh, which was great to see. Puts him in great position. Uh, across midfield now, ball on Exeter's 49, first and 10 with 720 left here in the first quarter. Interesting look offensively here by Burks Catholic. And throwing outside for Caccione, incomplete. Incomplete. 
Second and ten. I think they've got to at least mix up the pass a little bit in there, Kerry, just to keep that Exeter defense honest. Yeah, and you know, something that you know really kind of caught my eye and stood out was uh, uh, you know a new guy rising up here, number 19, tight end Owen Wolf in the scrimmage, making some nice catches, and uh, be interested to see how he figures into the uh, the game plan tonight for BC. There's McFoy, and he bursts through. A nice hole there. You know, good blocking on this drive for Burks Catholic. They're opening some holes now. Well, you know, that was really, you know, like one of my keys to the game coming in. I talked about Exer and, you know, the, the offensive linemen that they lost to graduation now playing at the next level. Um, you know, BC, what they have, like 29 seniors from last year's team that they have to replace. And, you know, a, a veteran quarterback like Durr, uh, you know, your field general, Peyton at tight end, of course, Brand George linebacker, and Nico Myers center now down at Westchester. All those guys are playing in college, and uh, so it's uh, we'll see how this offensive line gels for Burks Catholic. It looks like they're doing a good job so far. Oh, Larkin around the end, he's wrestled down there, short of the first down. It looks like. Yeah, you can really. That was <laughs> so. I know there's a lot of talk this week in Berks County, you know, quarterbacks, things like that, but you can really rack that up to Gavin McCusker coming screaming through from the safety position, uh, kind of blowing that up across the line of scrimmage in the backfield, slowing things down, allowing the XR defense to uh, bring up this fourth and two situation on uh, the 41 of Exeter. Big play here early on in this game. Madrick under center. Gives it to McFoy. It looks like he's got it. Yeah, initial contact. He still would have had the first down, but I'll tell you what. Like I said, you know the thing, you know McFoy. The the you know the fear is always when he gets in the space and what he can do. Uh, but he's had a couple tough runs up the middle here where he's taken a hit and he's still gotten two or three more yards after getting hit. Uh, tip of the cap to that young man for some hard running. That's for me. All right, first, first and 10 at the 33. Here's McFoy picking his way. No, that's Colby Newton. Excuse me, Colby Newton there picking his way. Tough run for about two yards. Going to make it about second and 10 here. Excuse me, second and eight. The thing that's really positive to see here for Burks Catholic, again, they kind of were on their heels that first opening drive, but to just come back, and now they're very methodically working on taking the ball down the field. We're sitting here with the second and eight. Ball's on the 31 going in. Five minutes left in the first quarter. Colby Newton behind Madrick, and he's back to pass and almost dropped. I guess that'll be counted as a sack since he was behind the line of scrimmage. Looked like that was, that was number 64 there for Exeter. Yeah, really. Connor Powell. Joe Notowski, uh, number 20, is the one who got through, got the initial penetration, and uh, kind of screwed up the whole time in the routes there. So, you know, he really was the one that was the catalyst to that nice defensive stop by Exeter on that play. Actually losing, losing a little ground here and going to uh, third and nine with the ball on the 32. Going to be an interesting call here. Newton behind Madrick. And they are back to throw. And he's sacked. Wow, number 44 in there. The stop, Gabe and Eng Eagle. Yeah, Gabe Eagle, he's a he's a senior, six foot one ninety-five, playing D tackle for him. I don't really know what was going on there. They had one guy going down the going down the sideline and uh, McFoy was split out here to the left. He was the inside receiver and he kind of just hung at the line of scrimmage. I don't know if they were going to attempt to set up a screen with him, but it never materialized and results in a sack for Exeter. All right. Nice kick there. And oh, rolls out of bounds at the five. That was number 92 on the punt. That ball definitely took it. Ale uh, Alexander Zavala, beautiful coffin corner kick. You don't see that very often. Well, took a uh, home bounce here at Burks Catholic. One thing I wanted to talk about, Bruce, is uh, you know the down on the field earlier. This, of course, this plane service is in great shape. We had the opportunity to do a broadcast here last year for their first home game, and this was brand new turf last year installed by AstroTurf. 
and uh, we had a uh, you know wet wet games and you know wet weather and uh, the field drains great. Of course, today a little rain here in Pennsylvania in the morning, but incredible conditions for uh, playing uh, high school football here in ben- Pennsylvania in Berks in Berks County and uh, uh, great playing surface here at uh, uh, Berks Catholic High School. Incredible night, incredible night for football. All right, first and ten from the four Exeter. Looks like Javier's in there at quarterback. And he's taking it right up the middle. Good gain. Got him out of a hole. This is one of the stories, again, you know, on our previous show talked about, you know, for really a decade, a lot of consistency, a quarterback with Exeter, of course, with the two older Yoakum brothers, you know, and then uh, Brandon Ogner, Cuffler. But, um, you know, we saw injuries last year. And, um, you know, of course, now McCusker's healthy. Um, Payne, who we had saw come in as a freshman last year, he's a sophomore, he's available. But Javier in the Wildcat, nothing new to Exeter. They did when Brandon Unger Cuffler was uh, hurt with Gabe Chappelle, and uh, it gives them another dimension and another look. I just like to see Javier throw it to McCusker. Javier, oh, inside there. Beautiful play. In quickly. That was number 44. Again, Javier is a, a great athlete, uh, but when you have penetration, you have three, four you know, defenders across the line of scrimmage. Uh, it's hard to have an answer for that. I still think we'll see Javier at some point tonight. You know, getting him, in, you know, watching his huddle clips from the scrimmage last week. When you get him in the space, uh, he becomes super dangerous with his yards after the catch. Uh, but uh, you know, Exeter backed up here. Now McCusker back in there, quarterback Nixon behind him. Third down and nine. Or Yoakum, excuse me. Wide open is Yoakum. And he is up the sidelines all the way out for the first down. Looks like pretty close to the 25-yard line. Great play there. Yep, Jeremiah Nixon coming out of the backfield. We saw him run the ball very successfully on their opening drive. Jeremiah Nixon there uh, getting out in the flat. Little pitch and catch with McCrusker. And uh, it's huge getting the first down, but it gets them uh, a little bit of breathing room without having their backs backed up to their own end zone. Absolutely, absolutely. First and 10, ball on the 23 going out. A little under two minutes left in the first quarter. McCusker back across the middle, incomplete. That was intended for number 88. It's Jonathan Oberholtz. Mark McFadden, excuse me. Um, Jonathan Oberholzer. Jonathan Oberholzer. Yep, he's a junior, 6'2", 205, tight end. All right, second and 10 now from the 23. About a minute 46 left in the first quarter. Exeter on top, 7 to nothing. And that time it was Yoakum, I believe. Ball carriers number 18, J.R. Stroud. J.R. Stroud. So it's J.R. Strauss, and uh, I know initially they have him listed as a, a tight end in the uh, you know, in the program, but he's been getting work at running back. And um, you know, of course, we saw Nixon start out that first series, and you know, start out here in the second series. But I anticipate J.R. Strauss is going to get some more touches here as the night goes on from the backfield. We want to thank our friends at Reading Alleys for underwriting. BCTV Friday Night Football. Reading Alley's out in Robazonia. Lots of good jobs available. Give them a call. All right, second and 10 now on the 23. Exeter on top, seven to nothing here. Still a minute 34 to go in the first quarter. Huh? You got a penalty on that play too. Did you see the flag? I did not, Bruce. Legal procedure, according to my friend Jim Berkman here, doing our stats. Jim will be on with us at halftime to go to give us the analysis of the first half. And that's Scott along the left side. Not a whole lot. Yeah, Devin Scott starting at his wide out position over here on the right, coming across a little jet sweep action. Could never turn the corner, just uh, kept going horizontal. Uh, nice job by the uh, Berks Catholic uh, defense being able to string that out. All right, third and 15 now. Ball on the 23. You know, big play here. The, the no, Berks Catholic no, really got to kind of flip the field position. Third down and 15. So you would think, uh, you know, Devin Scott, who just got the touch there last time, uh, 
he's a speedster too. You know, with him and uh, and Javier, those guys. You know, you get them the ball in space, they can make stuff happen. All right, McCusker, calling signals. Looking for Oberholzer over the top, incomplete. Punning situation now, just what Burke's Catholic needed. Yep. Exer had twins to the right that time, single receiver up top on the left, tried to hit the uh, tight end there, and coming down the seam, unsuccessful. Men 16 left here in the first quarter at Burke's Catholic High School. Exer Township Eagles visiting Burke's Catholic here in the, uh, the opener for both of these teams. All right, Culpit back to punt. We always talk about special teams. And a beautiful high kick. Caccioni, he's got it at his 40. Up the sideline, makes a cut to the center. Good return to about the 48 yard line carry where good field position for Burks Catholic to start this drive. No, great, uh, great punt, uh, nice. Nice job there uh, by Cisnerosis with the uh, tackle, number 50 for Exeter. BC's going to take over on the uh, Exeter side of the field here. Minute three to go. Let's see what Burks Catholic does here. I think they've been uh, a little bit frustrated by this Exeter defense so far. So let's see what Madrick can do. Under center. And that's Colby Newton. Nice job by the uh, Burks Catholic offensive line there. Again, that push, uh, you know, really, you look at this, you know, two, two really big offensive tackles. Uh, the left, uh, um, left tackle for between uh, Jackson Goffis and uh, Andrew Chilarelli. Number 73, Goffis is 6'3", 295. Chilarelli, the other tackle, number 51, 6'2", 285. Madrick, McFoy, ooh, boy, he was hit, and he fumbled the football. He put it on the ground. And it looks like Exeter's picked it up. That looks like it was number 63 with the recovery. Jalen Miller. Boy. Jalen Miller, the uh, senior line. nose guard, number 63, coming up with a fumble recovery and uh, see what Exer can do. Boy, that was, uh, he really took a shot and uh, went into the line. Nice play there by uh, Miller on the stop, too. So let's see what Exer can do here. Good field position, 17.2 seconds left in the first quarter, up 7 to nothing over Burke's Catholic. Gavin McCusker in the gun at quarterback. And that's Nixon. Not a whole lot there. Initial hit made by number 55, Randy Tomo. Also in the tackle, number 66, Luke Hughes. Luke Hughes. Yeah, Sophomore there, 6-2-205. And that's the end of the first quarter. With Burks, uh, Exeter leading Burks Catholic 7-0. Parents and coaches, do you wish you had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes? Fortunately for you, there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that. Introducing Small Player Big Play. Small Player Big Play app provides young athletes, parents, and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform. The app allows users to connect with friends, make new friends, create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts. Okay, and we're back to live action. McCusker now, oh, into the 
into a crowd. Looks like to. Yeah, Gio Nowatarski there. I couldn't tell if it was 20 or 23 there. Nice catch. Catch only with a nice tackle there, too. Third down and one here for Exeter to open up this uh, second quarter. McCusker on the keeper around the end, and he's got the first down. Okay, looking back here at the first quarter, um, Exeter had 56 total yards in the first quarter, and uh, BC had 37 total yards on offense in the first quarter. Pretty interesting uh, statistic there because I thought that maybe Exeter might have a bit more of an advantage because they did have that nice drive and really as far as time of possession, I got to believe they they did a, a, a much better job of B, than BC. All right, McCusker back. He's looking off to the right there. That was for Nixon. So Exeter has crossed over here onto the uh, Berks Catholic second side of the field. Uh, second and 10, and uh, ball on the 49. Start of the second quarter here at Berks Catholic High School, in Berks County, and uh, you know, we talked about the total yards, time of possession, things like that in the first quarter. You know, what really matters is what's up on the scoreboard, and we have Exeter leading seven nothing here at the end of the first, starting the second. And Nixon, another nice run, first down. Very good first quarter, starting the second quarter the same way. Yeah, he was really the worst. And Nixon, that first drive. That another drive. nice run, first down. And, uh, and uh, starting out the second quarter here the same way. I, I love the way he runs. He runs hard, uh, gets that forward lean. Yeah, when he, gets, he still gets yards afterwards. All right, first and 10 now. Ball is on the 38-yard line of Burks Catholic. Number two, Jeremiah Nixon. He's a junior. 5'11", 195, running back here for Exeter. Really putting the, together some positive yards for their offense here so far in this game. All right, McCusker. Oh. Flag on the flag. Somebody moved. Guard. Jumping on that play. All right, going to march him back five, going to be first and 15 now. Illegal procedure. All right, let's see what uh, Exeter does here. They haven't been afraid to put the ball up. But why do it when you got Nixon there? Not a bad gain. Gets about the uh, penalty yardage back, maybe a gain of four. Uh, going with a little two-back set there. They actually had number nine, uh, Ty Yoakum, who starts at inside linebacker for him in there as uh, blocking back. And a three yards. Second down and 12. Second and 12 now. Looks like right at the 40-yard line. Looks like they'll continue with that. Looks like they have uh, Nortowski and uh, Devin Scott. Twins up to the right. And, uh, yeah. You know, the one thing that we haven't talked about uh, yet, Kerry, is, you know, this whole new 40-second clock between plays. And um, I haven't seen any indication that either team has had any problem with that at all. Yeah, it, it took till you know, <laughs> 10 minutes left here in the second quarter for you even to bring it up, Bruce. And, you know, that's one of the things of, yeah, you know, we didn't even talk about it. Is that going to have any kind of effect on the game? I mean, I know, you know, following everything on Twitter the last few weeks, all the meetings, you know, with the referees going over it. I know it's a big point of discussion, talking about it at the scrimmages on the sidelines and everything else. But, uh, yeah, it, it's not affected, you know, one way or the other so far tonight. Well, I think that, uh, you know, just uh, – it's helped the flow of the game without really, you know, any type of stops or starts. And there's Nixon again. Boy, gets about back to the uh, original line of scrimmage. Was great job, uh, you know, 44 C.J. Carwell for uh, Burks Catholic screaming in there, bringing the heat. McCusker acting like a seasoned veteran on that play, dumped it off to Nixon, and uh, Nixon got some positive yards out of it. Sitting here with third and ten. The ball's on the 38 going in for Exeter. And Nixon doesn't get a whole lot there. Burke's Catholic defense really stout. 
That was number 71 there with the stop. Jacob Colazzo. He just stuffed that play from the get-go. And it looks like Exeter's going to kick it away. Culpit again, who's had actually a very good game putting the football so far. Now, really, in Berks, Berks County, uh, you know, with with Cupid and Henry, Exeter uh, definitely has an advantage with the uh, the kicking game with all phases, uh, having those two young young men on their special teams. Oh, and uh, not a good one there, unfortunately. Just barely. Oh, and he gets a nice bounce. And it looks like it's going to go down at about the 20-yard line. Kick was down at the 21-yard line. Down by number four, Tim Fleischel. So we know what the intent was there. He was going to try and uh, get it down in that right corner. Imperium Management Services is hiring for a variety of positions, both full-time and part-time, including direct care professionals, RNs, case managers, and personal care specialists. Many of these opportunities include a sign-on bonus from up to one, for up to $1,000. Imperian Management Service is conveniently located at 3929 Perkiomen Avenue in Reading. All right, ready to go here. 8.43 to go until halftime. Exeter on top, 7 to nothing, And here's Mafoy, and he's wrestled down. Oh, was he down? I, like, yeah, I think his knee was down. I thought he was down, too. That was Yoakum with a nice tackle. Yeah, Ty Yoakum, nice job there uh, from his linebacker position, scraping, filling, and uh, nothing for McFoy. I think one thing here, you know, we talked about this, Bruce coming in. Yeah, I've talked about this. Uh, you got play light makers like McFoy and on the, the other side for Exeter with uh, Javier. You know, I've been talking about you get these guys in the space and see what you can do. McFoy's done a decent job coming out of the backfield, but we haven't seen either team try to, you know, get the ball in the hand of those playmakers in space. Madrick, and just didn't hit up with his receiver. It looks like he was looking for number 24, Andrew McConnell. Yeah, senior wide receiver for Burks Catholic. McConnell is six foot 174. That's going to bring up third down and 12. Ball on the 19-yard line of Burks Catholic. Exeter leading 7-0, 758 until halftime. Burks, Burks Catholic coming out with two receivers up top to the left. And they give it to McFoy right up the gut. He's got a little space. And there he goes, along the sideline, still going. Pretty close to the first down, and a flag. Looks like they got 15 coming on top of this carry. Yeah, I couldn't quite see it with, the, with all the, the bodies over there, but you know, when you see that come up after a player's already been out of bounds, you know, we saw it on the other side for Brooks Catholic in the first quarter. Again, doesn't look anything like you know, super malicious, but it's just those little mental mistakes of that little extra push when the guys are out of bounds, you know, that, that just give the offense another 15 yards. Yeah. Boy, just when, uh, you know, Exeter kind of had him pinned back, going to give Burks Catholic good field position here. Very important drive for Burks Catholic to get something going now, Gary. No, absolutely. Uh, it'd be, be huge for them to get points on the board, kind of tie this thing up. Of course, we were here at the... Uh, the home opener for Burks Catholic last year in that uh, knock them down, drag them out uh, defensive battle with Central Dolphin. Madrick. And he ends it off, looks like the Colby Newton. And he's got about six, maybe five. On the stop, Robbie Onyu playing D tackle for uh, Exeter. Nice job on the stop there. All right, second and six here. Ball's on the 49 of Exeter. Burks Catholic trying to take advantage of an Exeter uh, personal foul call. Starting to get a little bit darker here. And uh, we can see our illuminated down marker, Bruce. Oh, my, yeah. We love the illuminated down marker. <laughs> I think it's the only one in Burks County. 
I know that was kind of a novelty last season for us. And uh, they got the lights on and they got the illuminated uh, down marker on. All right. That's uh, going to make it about no gain there. Third and six. This is an important down, Kerry. They've got to try and keep this drive going. Absolutely. You know, you're crossed over onto the exer side of the field, try and keep those positive yards going. <laughs> They're really in a tight formation. Madrick, McFoy. Oh, boy, he just got tightrope there. Fourth down. Going to be interesting, the call here. Looks like Burke's yep. Catholic is going to kick. Yeah, J.R. Strauss there uh, with the clothesline tackle. BC, number 92, Alex, Zavala. Alex Zavala back in punt formation. And Did a nice BC, job earlier in the punting three, game. Alex see what Javier. Zavala can do this time. Alex Javier deep for Exeter. Zavala down the sideline here. And a good kick. Inside the 20 to about the 19. So Javier doesn't get the chance there. Fans get your 2019 football schedule magnets. Alvernia University helps us to produce this broadcast for BC TV. Thank you so much to the Golden Wolves and the Vern Sports Network. Okay, first and 10 now from the 18-yard line. Let's see who lines up at quarterback. It looks like it's McCusker, or maybe not. It is. McCusker with uh, Nixon, uh, the one back in the backfield with him. Swings it out to Nixon. A little bit of space. Oh, nice tackle there by Newton. Nice job by the wide receiver, Murkowski, there getting a, a block to get some additional yards on that right side. If Newton is not there, he's going for a long way. Second and three now. Yeah, again, that's a, a huge compliment to a wide receiver there. You know, a lot of guys like to run patterns, but when you're out there and you're blocking as well, it's key to a great receiver. Ooh, pushed back there. Nixon again. Boy, he has been the workhorse tonight for the Exeter Eagles. C.J. Carwell on the stop there for B.C. And it is a first down. That's enough for an eagle first down. We'll see if they can put a drive together here like they did with their opening drive. Take it down the field. 4.51 left here in the second quarter. Brooks Catholic High School. Exeter Eagles up on top on the scoreboard. 7-0. to zero. Beautiful night for football here in Brooks oh, County. Incredible. Incredible. All right, here's McCusker now. Oh, and there's a whistle. Yeah, we saw a couple little hiccups early on, but uh, starting to see more and more here in the, the second quarter. Dead ball foul. Illegal procedure on the offense. Exeter's been a, a little bit uh, kicking themselves in the foot there. That's their sixth penalty this first half. First down and 15. Thanks to our buddy Jim Berkman. Spotlight on Burke Sports for all the stats tonight. Oh, boy, he had six in mind. Oh, man, that was number one there. <laughs> yeah, Lincoln Lutz jumping Boy, that route. That was six. All right. Yeah. Sec looks like it's about second and about 15, Kerry. Yeah. 4.33 left until halftime. Yeah, and something, you know, we talk about usually each game and, you know, throughout the season, you know, these hash marks are the wide high school hash marks here, and they kind of ran that into the short side of the field. And I believe that was 18, yes. So it's J.R. Strauss. J.R. Strauss. Number 44, C.J. Carwell. 
Well, a BC defense rising to the occasion now. All right, so we got like a third and 15 here. Four minutes left in the uh, second quarter. Again, the wide side of the field here for Exeter is the left side. The ball's all the way over on the right hash. All right. Scott and Javier out wide here to the near side. McCusker, he's under pressure. He's looking for, he finds Nixon down the sidelines and he's got the first down. Yeah, he was, he was definitely looking, uh, looking this way for Scott and, uh, and Javier. A little bit of pressure turned back, dumped it off to Nixon. Nixon uh, got a lot of positive yards out. It. Seems like uh, Nixon has been the workhorse so far, whether it's been with the run game, pounding it between the tackles, uh, or you know, getting the ball out to him, swinging it out, and uh, a couple of receptions here for positive yards for Exer as well. Nixon's been the workhorse. McCusker to Nixon. Right up the middle for about three. Got to keep an eye on the clock, Harry. There's 3.39 left to go here in the first half. They're on their own 45-yard line. About a second and, I'd say, six. Yeah, plenty of time for the Exeter offense. You know, when you look at the game dynamics here, uh, you know, you could you put another touchdown on here and you go up two scores before half. Kind of starts to put the pressure on BC a little bit. Oh, yep. Backfield started there way too early. Again, just the uh, the miscues here. Yeah, that's their seventh penalty of the first half. Yeah, there's the one for the personal foul over on the sideline, but I think all the rest of them have kind of come here with uh, you know, either the O-line or the backfield kind of jumping early. I guess that can be expected in the first game. Not if it can be expected. I mean, obviously coaches don't like those metal mistakes, but... Uh, I guess as a, as a fan, you can kind of say that. But Oh, Yoakum, big play up the middle. He's got the first down. Beautiful pass there from McCusker. Yeah, nice job by Yoakum, nice job by McCusker. Again, I think the, the poise that McCusker has shown here, really getting you know, this first start of the year has been uh, – has been a positive, you know, Yoakum, we've seen them, them moving them around yards. a little bit, kind of, you know, some H-back stuff. And it's all in, you know, two back, you know, kind of more blocking fullback and there with the reception. McCusker swings it out to Nixon. Oh, oh no, nope, that was Scott. Yeah, that was Scott this time. Really, for the most part, Scott and, uh, you know, Javier have been Non-factors, yeah, non-factors so far, except Javier a little bit in the run game, but... It's really been Jeremiah, the Jeremiah Nixon show so far. Yeah, we saw the, the Wildcat once, you know, for a few plays there with, uh, with Javier, but they were pinned up against their own goal line when they were doing it. McCusker. And there's Scott. He's got some space. Boy, he's fast. Down the sidelines and out of bounds. Looks like at about the 25-yard line. Yeah, nice design, nice execution all the way there. You know, they had two other receivers down here, you know, on the left side. Got them going up the field. Got that uh, opportunity for Scott to catch the uh, the ball there and have some, some room in front of him to uh, start moving. 2.15 left on the clock here in the second quarter. X are up 7-0 over the Burks Catholic Saints, and they're driving. McCusker looking sharp on this drive. Hands it off to Nixon. Across the right side for a gain of about four. See where our illuminated down marker takes us. The second down and looks like about seven carry or a long six. Down to a minute 47 to go until halftime. No rush here for Exeter. Scoring a TD and not letting much time left on the clock. Not a bad thing. Nixon the lone back. McCusker. Out to, Nick, out to uh, Devin Scott, and he's brought down there by number 21. That's Clayton Gibbs. And he's a little up. He gets up. Yeah, a little bit better use of the field there. You know, they hit, uh, hit Scott, you know, with uh, a lot of room to run here on the left side. You know, a couple plays oh, now on the right side. Trying to get him out in the space. Again, we're you know in the closing uh, minute 24 here of the uh, second quarter, and uh, 
Thanks to Daryl Tillman, Remax of Reading, for all of your support for our broadcast. <laughs> oh my God, the fun of live. See, it's TV this year, Kerry. We were online last year. This is where we're up to TV, but man. Duct tape, bailing wire, you name it. We love it. And we hope it's been a blast putting this all together. And uh, look forward to so many great games this year. Yep. Can't thank uh, Avernia Vern Sports enough. You know, of course, our producer, Lewis. <laughs> Guys, make it easy. I just come in, throw on the headset, talk about football. All right, here's McCusker. Looking down the sidelines for Javier. Oh, it's got to be interference there. Yeah. I mean, he tackled him. Yeah, he never turned around, and yeah, it was pretty much a mauling. Nolan Larkin, I think, uh, tackled him before the ball got there. Yeah, and, yeah, again, yeah, never got to see how it unfolded there. Maybe it's going to be a little bit underthrown. Javier was trying to get uh, come back to it and just didn't have the opportunity. But <laughs> You know, we're going to have to do something with those people on the sidelines that are in front of our camera. I mean, this is incredible. Pass interference. Our buddy Schmitty down there. Going to have to outfit him with uh, some kind of a shoe rod or something. Get those people shoot away from our camera angles. Okay, third and seven now. Half the distance to the goal line. Uh, maybe we need to get him on one of those elevated golf carts or something, Bruce. I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to have we're going to have to get an illuminated camera so that people know. All right, big play here. First and 10, ball on 23, X are going in, a little bit over a minute left. McCusker off to the side. Beautiful interception. Yeah, I really think Evan was going to uh, you know, just try and you know, make a smart decision and just get rid of that ball. When you're going to do that, you make sure that no one's going to catch it, though. All right. Again, though, been impressed with McCusker and the poise that he's shown, you know, here in his uh, first start of this season. Yoakum with the block out of the backfield. Jeremiah Nixon, no surprise there. Again, again, positive yards. Balls on the seven. We're under a minute now. Clock's running. Under a minute. Exeter doesn't seem to be in much of a rush. I don't think anybody's used any timeouts yet, Bruce. So. They're down in seven. This is taking a little bit. A little bit here. Obviously, I think he's going to call timeout yeah. now. Now we'll keep it right here with 28.8 seconds to go. Uh, Kerry, what would you look for uh, Exeter to try here? Uh, it looks like it's about uh, third and goal from the uh, seven yard, excuse me, the eight yard line. Yeah, uh, I think if you're going to do it, now's time to try and get that ball to, to one of your playmakers in space. Um, you know, get it to Javier, you know, get it to Scott and uh, let them go. You know, you do have two cracks with it being third down. I mean, you could get the first down still and, uh, you know, which, you know, if this is a different point in the game, less than, you know, we have under 30 seconds left. You know, you're going to have to, you know, punch into the end zone here. Well, you know, and, and look, I mean, uh, they still have a good field goal kicker as well. I mean, if uh, they get stopped on this, I would expect them to go for three. Yeah, no, Sean Henry's lights out as an extra point and field goal kicker for Exeter. All right, big play here. Third down and seven. Third and seven, ball on the eight, 28.8 .8 seconds left in the first half. Exeter's up seven and nothing over Burks Catholic. McCusker now looking, looking, looking. Looks like we've got a flag in the backfield. Boy, just what you didn't want there, Kerry. Looks like there's gonna be a holding call. Broken up by number 21, Yeah, you had... Uh, 
You had Javier and Scott here to the left side, and uh, you, know, you see Cusker rolling to the right. Again, risky with getting rid of the ball there. Or getting rid of it, get rid of it, that nobody's going to catch it. So we're here waiting on the call. Regardless, I think we'll be looking at a uh, fourth down situation. Wow, they declined it to turn to make him uh, to give him fourth down. I, you know, that's why we have people like us to second guess, but probably not the probably not the uh, not a bad choice there, Kerry. Mm -hmm. Gonna bring up fourth down now. Twenty-five will be the kicker, Sean Henry. Sean Henry, as you said, Kerry. He was warming up, I mean, uh, before the uh, game here. And, I mean, he was easily booting him through from between 40 and 45 yards. So Exeter calls timeout. We're just going to keep it here with 22.4 seconds left in the half. Um, you know, despite, you know, really Burke's Catholic, uh, they haven't uh, had a sustained drive or whatever like that. You know, uh, if they could hold these guys to a 10 nothing halftime score, I think that that would be, you know, a, a, a good conclusion for this first half. Yeah, definitely. The game's, you know, very much in reach. Uh, no reason to panic. You know, it's kind of make your halftime adjustments. You know, it's okay, everybody, we got our... You know, got that, that half under our belt. Let's just go out, execute, make plays, stay away from, you know, the silly penalties. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, this is going to be a – I think this can, you know, go down the wires. This isn't going to get out of hand. It's going to be a back and forth and uh, see what goes on here to end the, uh, the first half and, uh, you know, looking forward to the second. All right, Sean Henry. 25-yard attempt for Sean Henry. Number for 25. Number 25 Sean Snap, down, kick. And it's good. That makes it 10 to nothing. Exeter. Great job. From over right Burke's Catholic. 19.9 seconds to go here in the first half. Well, you know what? The very uh, sustained, productive drive there. 11 plays, 74 yards. There for Exeter. Thanks, Jim Berkman. 19.9 seconds to go until halftime. They're just going to pooch it down there. And Yeah, we should see Josh Cupid. He handles the uh, kickoff and the uh, the punting duties for Exeter first, uh, you know, to open up. Tempted to squib, but eventually got back, made his way to McFoy. Exeter did a nice job of, uh, you know, shutting that down. Next time when they did the kickoff, kicked it out of bounds. 19.9 seconds left here in the first half. McFoy the deep man. Cupid to kick for Exeter. Yeah, our, uh, <laughs> I can't believe all the fun that our buddy down there, Scotty's having uh, uh, with uh, our camera angles there. We're going to have to figure out a way to get those people out of the way for us here. I guess we're not used to, you know, television being at the games here in Berks County, Kerry. I mean, uh, um, we're really glad to bring these games back to the fans here at Berks County. Um, first game here. Uh, great that we're starting off here at Berks Catholic. Uh, we did a few games here last year, and uh, what a wonderful start here with uh, Exeter leading 10 to nothing with 19.9 uh, seconds left to go here in the first half. I would expect so, just a little kneel down. So Exeter uh, kicked the ball out of bounds again, but it's going to give uh, the ball to BC with the 19.9 seconds. And we'll see what. And a flag. Well, they had a young man late getting off the field there. Dead ball foul. Illegal substitution. BC offense had 12 guys out. Didn't get the guy off the field in time. It's going to push him back. Five yard rally. 
taking a uh, guess here with the uh, tight formation that they have that they're just going to down it, go yep. in, regroup at halftime. Here's McFoy. Number two, Ooh, and he McFoy. is, you know, that's just a microcosm of the first half. McFoy really, I mean, he's had a few plays, but he's been held in check by that Exeter defense. Yeah, he really has. You know, he, he got some tough yards up the middle between the tackles, but just trying to get him to the edge, Exeter has done a nice job containing him. And that's the end of the first half. Exeter, 10, Burks Catholic, nothing. We're going to pay a few bills, and then Jim Berkman and I will go through the halftime stats. Tonight's winning 50-50 number is 8-4. Attention parents and coaches. Do you wish you had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes? Fortunately for you, there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that. Introducing Small Player Big Play. Small Player Big Play app provides young athletes, parents, and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform. The app allows users to connect with friends, make new friends, create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and share your love of sports with the world. Download the Small Player Big Play app today.
Attention parents and coaches. Do you wish you had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes? Fortunately for you, there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that. Introducing Small Player Big Play. Small Player Big Play app provides young athletes, parents, and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform. The app allows users to connect with friends, make new friends, create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and share your love of sports with the world. Download the Small Player Big Play app today. Bruce Badgley back here at uh, the Farino Sports Complex at Burke's Catholic High School. Just so very pleased to be uh, joined by my friend Jim Berkman, Spotlight on Burke Sports. How are you, Bruce? I'm doing great good. Great to be here. <laughs> it's great to uh, be uh, giving these games to the fans of Burke's County. You know, I mean, you, you know, you started Spotlight on Burke Sports, you know, last year. Right. And, uh, you know, I was so impressed with what you're doing. Really glad that you're part of the broadcast this year. Thank you, Bruce. We started that with the uh, with the motto, Every Athlete Matters, and we believe that. Uh, we're glad to be part of the BCTV programs. Uh, the great football game tonight. Uh, there are a lot going on around the county week one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, what are some of the keys of the first half? I mean, you kept, you know, getting with me on a couple things. You know, despite the fact that, uh, you know, Exeter's had, you know, a few penalties, uh, they pretty much dominated the first half, and especially Nixon. Yeah, a few penalties is an understatement. They have eight penalties in the first half uh, for 40 yards. Uh, now two of those penalties were kickoffs going out of bounds. But nonetheless, uh, even though they're trying to keep the ball out of McFoy's hands on the kickoff returns, you know, the eight penalties, I'm sure Matt Bauer's in the locker room addressing that situation right now. Yeah, and, we, and uh, I just touched on uh, Nixon there. He was really the workhorse for uh, Exeter that first half, wasn't he? Yeah, sure. He had uh, 13 rushes for 59 yards. He also had five catches for 64 yards. So he has 123 of their 158 total yards of offense. Oh, wow. And uh, that 158, how much did Burke's Catholic have? Burke's Catholic had 53 yards of offense. Wow. They, and they had the ball 19 plays. Uh, Exeter had it for 33 plays. Uh, basically a, a 14 to 10 time of possession difference in Exeter's favor. Incredible. But that, obviously that shows on the scoreboard. Actually, you know, I'm surprised that the score is as tight as it is, 10 to nothing. Uh, and, and part of that is because of the one fumble that Burks Catholic had. McFoy put the ball on the carpet. Uh, Exeter got the ball back and went down and got the, uh, the, the points out of it. And then at the end, right before the half, the long 11-play uh, drive, and where they got the field goal out of it. And I believe if there might have been another minute or two on the clock, they might have tried to go in for the touchdown instead of settling for the field goal. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was all Exeter, really, the first half. The statistics tell that story. Uh, what are the, some of the things you're going to look at for the second half? Well, again, time of possession. Exeter uh, really was battling the big guys up front. You know, you, you win at the line of scrimmage, and the big guys up front were, were really winning every battle on offense and defense. Um, Rick Keeley's probably in there with, with his Saints <laughs> talking to the big guys, uh, you know, and uh, hopefully they'll come out and, and the line, the big guys for the Saints will be a little bit better in the second half. Yeah, that's the one thing that Burks Catholic's got to get going, uh, you know, in the second half is that running game. Um, they tried a few passes there, uh, was uh, really inconsistent there. What were the passing numbers for Burks Catholic in the first half? Uh, they threw the ball twice. Uh, they dropped back four times. He was sacked twice. He threw two incomplete passes. Uh, McFoy had nine rushes, uh, not many yards, 30 yards uh, in the first half. So they've got to get something going, and it starts with the big guys up front. 
Yeah, it really does. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how uh, Exeter, one of the things that they really didn't use in the first half was, uh, you know, they did down deep in the end there with Javier. I look for them to, to use a little bit more of that in the second half and maybe run that Wildcat, use some clock, mm -hmm. and keep a, you know play keep away with Berks Catholic. What do you think? Well, we heard the rumors in the preseason and all the offseason that Javier was taking some stacks under center. Uh, you know, he was an all-county receiver last year. It, who read into it? I don't know. I sort of didn't read into it. I sort of read it as Wildcat snaps under center. I didn't think in any way he was going to be the quarterback for tonight's game. But he did run a couple plays uh, in the Wildcat in the first half. Uh, it didn't really amount to much. Uh, two rushes, uh, four yards, I believe it was. So not much in the Wildcat. Uh, we'll see what happens if, if Coach Bauer wants to keep going with that way or, um, you know, get him back outside and try to get him the ball outside. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Exeter up 10 to nothing here in the first half. Uh, we'll be back with second half action after we pay a few bills. Attention parents and coaches. Do you wish you had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes? Fortunately for you, there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that. Introducing Small Player Big Play. Small Player Big Play app provides young athletes, parents, and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform. The app allows users to connect with friends, make new friends, create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and share your love of sports with the world. Download the Small Player Big Play app today.
Bruce Badgley, Kerry Moyer back here at the Farino Sports Complex where Exeter leads 10 to nothing here at halftime. Uh, Kerry's got our game ball out here from the ball girl. Uh, this game ball will be presented at the end of the game to the uh, most valuable player that, uh, you know, the three of us here, Jim, you and I, you know, vote on. Um, what a great ball this is. Tremendous work that the ball girl does. Um, really looking forward to presenting uh, that, uh, I think, a very deserving uh, student athlete tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you're going to see who steps up here in the second half. Again, you know, it's 10-0 uh, in, in favor of the visiting Exeter Eagles uh, as the teams are both coming back out into the field now. Uh, this game's very well in reach for Berks Catholic. And uh, I think my big thing is, you know, coming in, wanted to see what would happen with uh, Javier for Exeter in space. You know, uh, Scott as well, and uh, you know Abdul McFoy for uh, Berks Catholic, and we haven't seen any, <laughs> any big plays yet. Dude. It's really been kind of uh, you know grinding it out uh, offensively for both sides. A couple miscues, you know, a couple procedural penalties here early on. Uh, but uh, who's going to step up here the second half, Bruce? Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Uh, you know, Jim had some great stats on time of possession, total yards, all in the favor of Exeter by a wide margin. Um, what does uh, Burke's Catholic do to turn that around in the second half, Kerry? Uh, just don't panic. I mean, again, it's only 10-0. You know, we saw they had the ability to, you know, start to put some drives together. The offensive line was getting that forward lean, playing a time to still get your run game going here and uh, really see who hits a big pass play here, you know, Burke's Catholic or, uh, or Exeter. We haven't really seen much of a passing game from either team, um, probably more so from Exeter, getting uh, probably Devin Scott out in space. Uh, a few times there, Nixon out of the backfield mm -hmm, as well. Right, I think, right. you know, from our end, it's probably Nixon's been the uh, the story so far. Uh, again, the real big place, but he's been the workhorse, you know, both on the ground, uh, pounding it between the tackles and getting him, uh, you know, out into, uh, you know, some swing passes out in the flat and uh, the ball to him that way as well. Yeah, I look for Exeter to maybe run a little bit more of that Wildcat with uh, Javier the second half. Uh, a little bit more ground game. Um, you know, we'll see. I mean, McCusker's played very well, though. He's really distributed the ball. Fantastic. Yeah, and again, I talked about a little bit in the first half. Uh, you know, you got him in his first start here of this season, and uh, the poise that he's shown, uh, you know, of hanging in there when, they, when he's had pressure in his face, I think has been excellent. A couple times, you know, throwing the ball away, just, you know, make sure that nobody's going to get close to it. But, right. again, I think for a guy coming in, you know, his first start of this season here, uh, couldn't ask more from, uh, from the quarterback. All right, very good. Both teams back out on the field getting ready for the second half. All right. Winding it down here, Kerry. Uh, we're going to try and get our camera guy down there, Smitty, a little bit more space so we can uh, uh, see if we can get a few more sideline shots. Uh, like I said, I think people and the fans just don't understand that we're actually broadcasting out here. I mean, we're al fresco. We're out in the stands. Uh, we love doing this. Um, you know, it's a bunch of fans. Community television, this is a community effort to get these games on. We thank so much to all of our sponsors, Imperium for underwriting uh, our broadcast along with Reading Allies. Some yeah. halftime scores, Blue Mountain 21, Muhlenberg nothing. Here's a bit of a surprise, Cedar Cliff over Governor Mifflin 12 to seven. Wilson up 14 to 10 over Central Dauphin. Cocalico all over Conrad Weiser, 28 to nothing. Boone and Garden Spot tied at seven. Fleetwood over Lee Heighton, hey. See how that works out. And uh, Redding all over Kutztown, 38 to three. Thank you, Jim Berkman. Again, ready to kick to start the second half. Uh, Berks Catholic kicking to Exeter. Just a couple comments on some of those scores there. Uh, uh, Mifflin, you know, being in that, knock them down, drag them out. Uh, you know, we'll see how that game ends up. Oh, fumbled it. Oh, it's still running. It's number 41. Nick Schaefer. Nick <laughs> Schaefer. Look what I found. Yeah, hey, but you know what? He made a football play. That's right. Muffed it, picked it up, got, uh, got his legs going. 
All right, first and 10 now for Exeter to start the second half. Oh, and a flag. <laughs> Exeter yeah. penalty, what's new? That's one of those, though, with the broken play with the muff, then picking the ball up. You know, you got your first wave of guys already down, and, you know, it's kind of just a scramble then. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's not like when they're screaming down, you're trying to get your initial blocks with them coming downfield. Half the distance to the goal line. All right, Exeter. Ten-yard line. In a deep hole to start the second half. Let's see if the Berks Catholic defense can rise up and get a three and out. That would be a, a huge positive uh, shot for them if they could do that. Keep the ball on this side of the field, even with a punt possibly. Yep, McCusker in there at quarterback. Last time they were backed up in the near their end zone, it was Javier at quarterback. So McCusker. And that's Nixon. And he's struggling for about three. Worked hard for that one. Again, we're seeing uh, as the game's going on here a little bit more of uh, Yoakum in uh, you know, different blocking positions. Of course, he starts on defense at a linebacker for him. Signaling the play in. Gain of two yards, second down and eight. All right, McCusker, that's Yoakum and Nixon. Nixon, and he's got a hole. Oh, did he lose the football? Nope. But he looks like he was hit hard. Hobbling going up a little bit. Newton on the tackle. Heavy hit there on Nixon. J.R. Strauss coming in now. Take Nixon's place there for Exeter. Yeah, we saw J.R. Strauss get a few touches in the first half. Big play here now. Third and a long one. From their own 19, oh, and was he drawn off? Guess we have to wait and see what Mr. Oh Official Oh my, says. Exeter with the illegal, illegal procedure. procedure. On the Galifans. Oh, that has to be at least, uh, that's you know, 10 penalties so far in this game for Exeter and uh, say a majority of those have been illegal procedure calls on their offense. McCusker. That's Strauss to his right. Third and six, ball on the... Three wide, Scott in the slot. Changing the play at the line. McCusker, he's looking for Javier. What a grab! What a grab by Alex Javier out to the 42 yard line. Yeah, I guess I got to kind of, you know, backtrack there a little bit, you know, talking about, uh, you know, Javier. They, they did attempt Look to get. Look at him. Go up for that one. Beautiful play. Yeah, they did attempt to hit him, uh, you know, going down the left side early in the first half, and he did draw the. Uh, the pass interference penalty, but they're just a great job. And again, I think you see Javier's athleticism. You know, there's a lot of nights he could be the best athlete on the field. Again, incredible basketball player at Exeter as well. Watch for the double pass. Flared it out to Javier outside, maybe a gain of about three. Okay, so again, you know, one of the things I talked about is trying to get Javier in space. So you got him, you know, hit a positive pass play there, but he started out on the left, motioned across to the right, got the ball to him behind the line of scrimmage, you know, and that's where he becomes really dangerous, even if you look at his huddle clips from the scrimmage last week. When he gets into space, gets the ball, his yards after the catch, that's where he can really do damage. Yeah, he just needs more touches somehow. And he split out here to the left. McCusker. Fumbles yes, the man. football! Burks Catholics got it! Number one! Jeremiah, excuse me, that one, Lincoln Lutz. The snap came back low, hit McCusker in the hand. He couldn't catch it. And Lutz was Johnny on the spot to pick that up. Yeah, whether you're a quarterback or a punter, you know, one of those things going up and down, you know, as long as it comes back in your midline. But 
that was just way too low. Hit him at the feet and, uh, you know, couldn't come up with the, the shortstop grab on it. Turnover. Burke's Our, Catholic. Ball. Uh, first and ten on the 42 going in. Oh, boy. Back move there. Looked like that was number uh, 44, C.J. Carwell. Not how you wanted to start this. Big momentum change. You force the turnover. You get a fumble recovery. You're on the opponent's you know, side of the field. And uh, to start with a legal procedure call on your, your first snap. All right, first and 15 now. Ball on the 47, 923 yet here in the third quarter. Burks Catholic looking for some momentum. Here's McFoy, and he is just hemmed in. You know, one of the things that, uh, you know, when I was talking to Coach Bauer this week, you know, he mentioned, uh, you know, it was no secret that Abdul McFoy was going to get the ball, and so far the game plan for Exeter has shut him down. Well, and again, you, know, you saw McFoy banging between the tackles in the first half. There again, you know, he hasn't been able to, to get outside at all. And, I mean, when you look at that, you know, that was, uh, you know, really number 63, Jalen Miller, you know, playing nose guard who had the penetration. You know, again, they've done a nice job at, at stacking up at the line, but he chased them down from behind. Madrick just lobs it up there out of bounds, incomplete. Nobody really uh, open there. I guess he was going to number 21 there, uh, Clayton Gibbs. For number yeah. 21, Clayton Gibbs. Yeah, when you're trying to work, you know, timing routes, which is, you know, what that was uh, when you have a, a lot of pressure in your face, you know, it really throws things off. So now we're seeing with the third and 16, you know, the ball's still on the Exeter side of the field. Uh, you got to come up with some yards here. Not what Burks Catholic wanted, starting out with a first and 10 after a huge fumble recovery. Well, let's see if they can get something going here. Madrick back. He's looking wide open there. He didn't get the ball, unfortunately. Looked like that was going to number 33 there, Nolan Larkin. He was open, he just didn't give him the ball, Kerry. Yeah, well, and Javier uh, was just playing center field, uh, you know, did knock it down, so, you know, he got the pass break up there. You know, with that, you go up, you get that ball at its highest point, and you start taking it back the other way. Fourth and 16. Are they gonna punt? Yes. <laughs> Punter wasn't out there, Zavala. Number 92, Alex Zavala. And he's kicking back to Alex Javier. Good snap. Nice boot. Javier fields the ball, and he is met right away, but he gets away. Look at this. Down the sideline, Alex Javier will not go down, and he's brought down there, though, at about the 44-yard line. Wow. Oh, and another flag. Yeah, the great job on punt coverage getting down there. When you got that opportunity to, to nail them and, and keep the ball right there, you got to make that tackle. Um, you know, and that's when it gets dangerous. You know, it, you know, Javier had this whole left side to work. Uh, one other guy's coming across, but the punter, you know, the, the safety on the whole thing was there to help. Uh, well, the officiating staff of referee Bo Stockholm, umpire Alex Papadreo, Head lineman Rick Hoffman, line judge Jared White, sign judge Kyle McKechnie, and field judge George Fields have been real busy tonight, that's for sure. The yeah, they have. Is on sports against Exeter. Oh my, against Exeter. Jeez, I thought it was something on the sidelines related to BC. Well, you know, and again, we have the whole you know BC squad right in front of us, so I couldn't say it, but I'm guessing, you know, Maybe getting a little chippy getting up, you know, with the, after the hit. Again, we've seen a, a few of those, you know, you know, 15 yarders 15 here. Yards. Again, nothing's been, uh, you know, super malicious, but again, it's just thinking, you know, just uh, keeping the zip, not making comments, and, you know, not just that little push after a guy's out of bounds that's unnecessary. Well, 8-17 here in the third quarter. Exeter up 10 to nothing over Burks Catholic. It's first and 10 on their own 27-yard line, and McCusker is back to throw across the middle. 
and incomplete. Yeah, we got a, another flag. And it was going to Javier across the middle. Well, you know, I talk about getting Javier in space, and you know, the other thing, too, it's like, you know, uh, where's the slant game at with him? That's the first time that they really threw to him over the middle. Again, that's so dangerous, though. You, you, if you hit him in stride, you know, and he can just keep going. Holding, Holding on the offense, pass interference. Looks like we're going to have offsetting penalties. Offsetting penalties. And we'll start it all over again. And the Berks Catholic student section with the you can't do that chant. But again, offsetting going both ways there. Well, speaking of that, really great crowd on hand here at Berks Catholic. Uh, fans ringing the Farino Sports Complex here. McCusker almost loses that great handle of the snap to Nixon. And he got it up to about the 21, maybe the 22. Yeah, yeah snap was high, but you know, McCusker's a you know, tall quarterback. And again, you know, when you know, when it's coming back, if it's in your midline and if you have to go down or go up, that's okay. It's you know when, when those snaps start going left and right, you know, and, and your eyes gotta go, that that's that's when it becomes troublesome. All right, second and five. McCusker. And not entirely sure who got in the game there to carry that. Oh, it was Strasser. Strauss. So. On to stop, number 73. Again, we saw Chase Jackson Yoakum Lopez. back in at, you know, the fullback position there with the block. Uh, of course, now Strasser in, uh, not quite sure. You know, we saw Nixon hobble off earlier. Strauss up the gut for the first down. Beautiful Strauss blocking in there by there. Exeter that time. No, and really nice One vision by him. And again, he's he's a tall guy. He's not, you know, compact by any means. But, uh, you know, good body control there, good eyes, you know, threading through and uh, getting those positive yards and getting the first down. Nice job by him. Nice rotation tonight between Nixon, Strauss, and Yoakum at that running back position. Uh, somebody moved. Wow. Gee whiz. Coach Bauer has to be pulling his hair out. Procedure on the offense. Man. Yeah, with the, the amount of this going on again, you know, we're not down on the field and hearing, you know, all the back and forth. I don't know if it's, you know, communication quarterback, you know, the snap count, you know, his rhythm, his cadence. You know, the defensive line for BC has been active and moving around before the snap, like they just did now. Uh, you know, is that part of the thing? You're getting his offensive lineman to flinch. And yeah, and which he just did there. That's the 13th penalty. That, that wasn't even a flinch. That was like after they came and crept up, you know, showing blitz and crept back, then it's just got out of your stance. You just can't do that. That's the 13th penalty for, I think, 80 yards now. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and just say it's that active, uh, you know, Burke's Catholic defense, you know, moving around, showing the, you know, coming up, faking the blitz. That's kind of gotten underneath the, uh, underneath the skin here with, uh, you know, Exeter's offensive line. All right, Strauss and Yoakum remain in the game in the backfield. We've got Scott and Javier split out here to the left. And that's Strauss, and he goes nowhere. My gosh, it seems like Sexeter's had the ball forever. It's only second down. 6-17 left here in the third quarter. We're well underway here in the second half. The uh, sun has gone down. Clear night here at Berks Catholic High School in Rain, Pennsylvania. Great night for PA high school football. Great night to open up the season. Again, there's that active defensive line for Burks Catholic. McCusker looking out to Scott on the left side. He's wide open. He's got some space down the sideline. And he gets about 10. That's still going to leave him about seven yards short of the first down. Now it's just a... 
just a snap of the fingers, a blink of the eye away here. You know, gain that out, you know, again, trying to get Javier in space, trying to get Scott out in space and let him be the playmakers. You know, and on the flip side, of course, uh, you know, are they going to get McCoy in space, you know, for Burke's staff? Big play here. The fans are alive at Farina Sports Complex. There's Nixon, and he is stopped in the backfield. That was C.J. Carwell, I believe. Yeah, they, you know, in addition to what we've seen with the, uh, you know, procedure penalties here with the extra offensive line, you know, there, there's been a lot more penetration here by D.C. You know, that got blown up in the backfield before it even got started. Also, okay, Dash Cupid, two, who's had a really good four. night punting so far for Exeter. The deep spot, along with number 11, Cacciano. Ready to punt. So, on formation, we just nine, had a uh, Josh Jeremiah Cupid. Nixon sighting flag. On flag. The so Nixon, who uh, was not in at running back that entire series, must have been on the punt team. He came out. It looks like they replaced him, so he... Seemed to be coming out on the field a little gingerly and then kind of got back off the, after the, the sidelines again. Mm -hmm. Brings up a fourth down, 11. So they got you know, Nixon for that illegal substitution there coming in, going back out, but he was definitely limping coming on the field. All right, Culpit, or Culpit, Cupid, excuse Cupid. me. Cupid. Nice boot. That's a great, great punt. Caccione lets it bounce, and it goes out of bounds. Goes wow. Out of bounds. Inside the 15-yard line. line, right at the 15-yard line. It's a way to flip the field going from, you know, line of scrimmage on your own 37. Thanks to Imperium Management Services. Imperium Management Services is conveniently located at 3929. Perky Oman Avenue in Reading. Imperium is hiring for a variety of positions, both full-time and part-time, including direct care professionals, RNs, case managers, personal care specialists. Many of these opportunities include a sign-on bonus. All right, first and 10 here. Back to live action on the 15-yard line. McFoy doesn't okay, get anywhere. And a flag. Flag on the play. Maybe a hand reaching in there for a face on mask. Stop, number 63, Jalen Miller. McFoy's gotten tough yards here in this game. It's been kind of been between the tackles, trying to get him right, you know, off off tackle. Uh, just hasn't sprung anything. You are exactly right, Kerry. They have, they have, they have. Uh, Sealed that edge very well, and you were right. You saw that face mask. And another Exeter penalty. Going to move Burke's Catholic out to some decent field position here. 443 left in the third quarter in this rather lengthy third quarter. First down and 10, Burke's Catholic. All right, they're at the 34-yard line now, first and 10. Madrick, oh, and he had nowhere to go. Beautiful play there by number 44. That's Gabe Eagle. Gabe Eagle. I mean, he was, he, he was there at the quarterback about the same time that he dropped back. Yeah, he had a, a nice play in the first half as well. You know, Exeter, the defense, they play. They got three guys there with their hands on the ground. You know, talked a little bit earlier about the, the nose guard. You know, uh, number 63, Jalen Miller. But, uh, you know, um, Really nice job there by Eagle from his defensive tackle position, hand on the ground, and uh, uh, you know, looks like the offensive line jumped. Line yeah, that's going to be a BC illegal procedure. Well, you know, first games typically have some uh, you know mistakes, legal but uh, it's been a little bit tough tonight for both teams, I think. Bring you know, up again, with the way the schedule is now, you know, in, in Pennsylvania, you just have that one scrimmage week, you know, so it's, you know, not making excuses, but, uh, you know, it, it's, you know, you, you got the heat acclimation, and you get your week of practice, you get that one scrimmage, uh, then you're right into go time. 
And there's McFoy, and he has no place to go. I mean, he is just stacked up by the whole oh, Exeter defense yeah, before he has a chance to get moving. That's number 63, Jalen Miller again, playing those. Uh, and he's just, uh, you know, had a, a real nice night in there. You know, in, you know, with the centers and the guards for BC, he's uh, kind of uh, been able to do uh, some really nice things to help that Exeter defense. Again, penetration kills running plays, kills anything before it even gets started. All right. Madrick. They've got to throw the ball here, but they the draw. That's the Carwell. He's got some room up the sidelines, but there was no way he was picking up the first down. No, yeah, they got a little bit of breathing room. And somebody's hurt on the sideline. I can't see who it is. Now we're kind of shielded by the BC players here. Yeah. Not sure who's down on the field there for, I believe it's Burke's Catholic. Might be a cramp. The small player big play app supports BC TV Friday night football. Set the trends, fans. Youth sports, nothing but sports. Safe social media. Check it out. It's free at the App Store and Google Play. Small player, big play. All right, coming back here. Looks like it was a cramp, thankfully. That was Carwell. I think he's got to come out of the game. And it looks like number 20 was down there for Exeter, Gio Nowatarski. Yeah, I think they, they were both sitting down getting the same treatment there. 2.50 left here in the third quarter of Berks Catholic High School. Berks Catholic uh, trailing the Exeter Eagles 10-0 in this uh, opening week contest. We're looking at fourth down for BC. About uh, fourth and 13 from their own, looks like their 35-yard line. Zavala has uh, done a nice job kicking for BC tonight, that's for sure. Alex Javier. Javier's deep and a really great kick. Backpedaling is Javier back to his 25-yard line. He's going up uh, with a head of steam down the sidelines. And he's tackled there. Nice tackle there. Number 20 there on the tackle. Andrew McConnell. Yeah, and again, football is really a game of three phases. You know, everybody, you know, offense, defense, but, you know, the special teams are huge. And I think we've seen a great job with uh, Javier, a little slow getting up there. Uh, still out on the field. Ooh. Uh, Hopefully that's just a cramp. Yeah, his teammates helping him off. But really between, uh, you know, Zavala there with the punting game for BC and, uh, you know, Henry and Cupid over on the other side, Handling the kicking duties for Exeter, we've seen some some pretty nice kicking game parts of the special teams anyway so far tonight. Absolutely, I mean the punters have really been shining here on both sides. Zavala, because uh, you know that's <laughs> he's been really one of the bright spots for BC tonight. And you know we're we're in you know the closing you know two and a half minutes here of the third quarter, and we've not seen you know Javier or, or Scott or you know Abdul McFoy break anything big yet in this game. And Cusker, and that's Scott in space, makes a man move, picks up a good eight yards. Nice move there. Made the first man miss, got upfield. No, and you got to do that. You're out in space. You know, you're, you're there. You're a playmaker. You got to make that first man miss. Scott did that. Got a couple more yards after the catch. Puts your team in a position if you got second down and three. Really opens up your playbook to what you can do. Knocking, knocking on the door of uh, crossing over into BC territory. Ball's on Exeter's 49. Nixon back in the game with Yoakum in the backfield with McCusker. 
Yeah, Yoakum's done a nice job as a blocking back. You know, I haven't seen him getting touches yet, but uh, of course plays middle linebacker as well. Tough-nosed kid. Nixon, beautiful run there. He just, just like you talk about, Kerry, he got through the hole, planted, went upfield, beautiful run there. Yeah, Nixon has definitely been the, uh, the workhorse for Exeter tonight. All right, gives him a first down. Looks like at about the 42-yard line of BC, a minute 23 to go here in the third quarter. They lead 10 to nothing. Twins down here with Nartowski and, uh, and Scott. Yeah, a little discombobulated there on the snap. That's a fun word, Bruce, and I think that's a good word for kind of what's going on here pre-snap. Yeah, pre-snap there. Yeah, you don't really associate the word discombobulated with football, but that's all right. So it's, a, it's a good fit for some of the pre-snap stuff that's been going on here so far. I think that is uh, apropos considering the amount of penalties by Exeter tonight. All right, McCusker calling signals. Gives it to Nixon, and he goes nowhere. Beautiful play in the backfield by Lincoln Lutz. I mean, he was there as soon as he got the ball. Yeah, and that, that's at least the second time that we've seen that tonight where he's been there to, to meet him in the backfield and, and blow things up. And again, say, say it last series, penetration's going to kill you know your, your whole offense. But in the run game like that... Down under 40 seconds to go in the quarter. McCusker looking down the right sideline, wide open. That's Scott, and he dropped the ball. Don't know what happened with coverage there. Had both of the guys Oscar's over on that side beat. Third and 17 yeah, now. Scott. That would have been a first down if he would have hung on to it. Wilson yeah. is ahead 14 to 13 over Central Dauphin with 8.54 left in the third quarter, Gary. Wow. McCusker scrambling around in the back. Finds a flare that looks as Javier. Oh, and he yeah. drove him. No call there, though. Boy, that was close to being a personal foul. Yeah, he drove him uh, you know, a couple yards there out of bounds and then took him down. But Well, going to yeah, be no. a no I'm surprise there with the uh, the Wilson uh, Central Dolphin bow. Do we expect anything other than a slugfest out of those two story programs? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Going to be an interesting call here. Fourth down and about five at looks like the 42 yard line. They are going for it, Kerry. And. Is that Javier? Yes, it is. Throwing. Scott. Oh, intercepted. Beautiful play there by number four. Tim Fleshhood. Wow, he just came bolting out of nowhere in a flag. Wow. So if we have about five minutes, we can talk about that whole play. You got Javier in at quarterback. Uh, just gets the ball up. Bounces off of Scott, get the interception. Uh, Javier on the tackle at the end, and a little extracurricular, I think, is going to draw the 15 uh, yarder there. Oh, my. Oh, boy. Remember that play. Just remember that play. Against Exeter, oh my! Yeah. Again, uh, you know, just from the live look here, it looked like you know a little extracurricular, uh, you know, with the tackle. Okay, so let's talk dynamics. Uh, you know, we've got a couple clicks left here. You know, third quarter, BC's got the ball, down 10 zip. You gotta get a drive here. You gotta get, you know, big play. You gotta get in the end zone. 17 penalties, 120 penalty yards for Exeter. All right, Madrick, let's see what he can do here. First and 10, ball is on Exeter's 47. Colby Newton directly behind him there in the backfield.
Little crossbuck action for McFoy, and that did not work at all. They're doing their best to try and free up McFoy, but that Exeter defense has just had his number all night, and that is the end of the third quarter with Exeter ahead 10 to nothing. Parents and coaches, do you wish you had a safe social media platform for your youth athletes? Fortunately for you, there's a revolutionary new app that helps with just that. Introducing Small Player Big Play. Small Player Big Play app provides young athletes, parents, and coaches a user-friendly sports social media platform. The app allows users to connect with friends, make new friends, create groups, text, chat, and post pictures and videos of you and your teammates participating in your favorite sport or activity. To begin, users can simply download and sign up for the app using an email account. Younger users have the ability to sign up using their smartphone and a parent's email address. From there, users can begin to interact and engage with other users of the app. Small Player Big Play app also gives users the ability to live stream full games and events. You can live stream your event so that friends, family, or anyone in the world can see you in action. Users can also share posts from the app to their other social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. What are you waiting for? Get in the game and share your love of sports with the world. Download the Small Player Big Play app today. And we're back at the Farino Sports Complex. Fourth quarter action, getting ready to get started. Exeter, 10. Burke's Catholic, nothing. Burke's Catholic uh, has got to put it together here. Uh, I think, you know, at the end of the third quarter, looking at this, we see Abdul McFoy has, you know, 29 total yards. Flag on play. That Exeter defense has really had his number tonight. And a flag on the play. It's been a reoccurring theme, unfortunately, this evening. Yeah, the wow, offsides on Exeter. Oh, my. Yeah, they're trying to get uh, Nolan Larkin coming across here with the, the rock in his hands, trying to get him around left end. Uh, he's never had a chance to go anywhere with the uh, the penalty there. Yeah. Again, Nolan Larkin, uh, be interesting to see you know, as the season goes on. Uh, <laughs> like I said, he you know, saw him at the scrimmage, uh, saw him on defense, and uh, chasing down people, and he has some wheels. Going to be interesting to see how Madrick gets the ball in the hands of his playmakers here in the fourth quarter. Larkin in motion. That looks like Newton up the gut, pounding ahead. Nice job by Cole Newton getting the uh, forward lean there. See where they officially mark it. Going to be about third down and four. Big series here for Burks Catholic starting the fourth quarter. Down 10 to nothing to the Exeter Township Eagles. Big play in the ballgame right here. Madrick to McFoy. To give it to their playmaker. He does have a little space. And he stiff arms his way up. I don't think he got the first down, though. And there's a penalty. Yeah, I think we're going to get something uh, here with uh, a block that was not okay. Uh, yeah, and, holding against Burks Catholic. You know, McFoy got the corner at time. But still, Exeter's defense, you know, it, it got him the bubble. You know, so it wasn't like he could just plant and then go. You know, he still had a bubble. Holding on the offense. Well... I tell you what, that defensive staff just done a whale of a job for Exeter tonight. Beautiful game plan in, and the players executing very, very well to really keep all the playmakers of Burks Catholic in check. No, I mean, and, you know, it's Chris Yaz, the defensive coordinator, and he's uh, you know been around the game a long time. He's been at Exeter. Yeah, you know, with uh, their recent success. You know, going back to that uh, 2015 Park Section 1 championship team and being the DC of that unit. Madrick, down the middle, incomplete, but they're going to call a flag. Oh, my. Yeah, they, there was 
hands all over. They were trying to get the ball there to, to the speedster. I was talking about Larkin. Is that going to be interference or holding? I guess that's the question. I don't see an indication yet. Looks like it is holding. So that'll be an automatic first down. Yep, so we had a little. See, that's beneficial. It was holding rather than interference because yeah. I'm not entirely sure they would have got the first down out of an interference call there. Yeah, it was number 31, the corner. Johnny Day with his hands on uh, Larkin, number 33 for BC. Well, I guess it isn't an automatic first down here in high school. Big play, third and seven. Ball on the XR 44. Big play for the Berks Catholic offense. Madrick. Handing it off to McFoy. And nothing doing. Nothing doing. And that's Ty Yoakum. Again, you know, he's been hard nosed on both sides of the ball, blocking in the backfield on offense. But that middle linebacker position, again, right through and uh, met him on the other side of the ball on Berks Catholic sideline scrimmage. Huge, huge defensive play for Exeter. Fourth and nine, and uh, looks like we're going to get a punt. Zavala back in there to kick. 10.42 now, remaining in the game. Exeter about ready to get the ball back, leading 10 to nothing over Burks Catholic. In the deep spot, number three, Alex Javier. Another nice uh, punt, but right to Javi. And he's got line. space, but Javi hauled down. Three, that was number 20 again on special teams. Has had a nice game. Steve Brennan. Another flag on the plane. Mm, great job by Burks Catholic with the coverage unit there yet for that uh, flipping of the field here. Let's see where they do spot the ball. Got the call on the penalty. Thanks to Alvernia University and the Vern Sports Network for their help in producing this BCTV Friday night football broadcast. The indication is blocking the back. Well, it looks like it's going to be another Exeter penalty. Landis Express, hiring over the road and local drivers. Give Landis Express a call. <laughs> okay, we're ready for action once again. 10-19 here. Remaining. Ten to nothing, Exeter. God, we love doing live television, Carrie, don't we? Absolutely. When it comes to doing live football, it, there is nothing better. Especially on a beautiful night like tonight. I mean, incredible weather. Really feels like football weather tonight. Uh, it does, you know. Getting out this morning, a little bit of rain uh, cleared up and just... Uh, Kind of overnight just turned into perfect football weather here to start the season. Be spotted at the 23 yard line. First down and 10, Eagle. All right, first and 10 for Exeter now. Let's see if they can put together a sustained drive here. That would sure, sure do them a favor. That's for sure in winning this football game. All right, McCusker. And that's Nixon, and he's open again along the outside. Cuts back, and he's hemmed in by the defense, really, for uh, not a lot of game. No, nice job, uh, you know, run contained there, support by the uh, Berks Catholic defense coming up, making the stop. Not a lot of offense by either team here in the second half. No, but, you know, we're at the point now. We're under 10 minutes here in the fourth quarter, and... Uh, you know, Exeter could kind of, you know, again, it's not over until it's over, but could kind of really put themselves in a good position 
they could sustain a drive and get some more points on the board. Okay, here's McCusker. He's looking down the sidelines, and then out to the side to Scott. And did he catch it? It looks like he did. Uh, not for a whole lot. Well, let's, let's give uh, the offensive line a little credit there. Nice job in pass protection. Yeah, gave uh, gave McCusker time to uh, you know kind of survey the field, see where he was going to go with it. But uh, again, this is a big play. I mean, you're, you're sitting here now. We're looking at third down. Probably about eight to go. Well, it's almost, uh, I don't want to say like, uh, you know, big play time here for the defense. But, uh, you know, they've got to rise up and give that offense some field position. They've had a difficult time moving the ball against that Exeter defense. So we got a flag on BC now. Okay, so we have a defensive penalty on Burks Catholic, and that's going to give that's Exeter the first, oh first my. down. Yeah, I mean, with with the inability of the BC offense to move the ball, I mean, they really need this defense to rise up and give them some field position. Ball resting at the 35-yard line. All right, first and 10 now from the 35. McCusker, he's looking. And nobody open. He's scrambling. Now he's got somebody, and it's, oh! In and out of the hands of number 21, Clayton Gibbs. Oh, man, that would have been what the doctor ordered for Burks Catholic. Yep, they never, uh, you know, turned down a pass breakup, but, yeah, he would have had the opportunity to get the ball back in the hands of the offense. And he had room to run, too. You know, there's two of those. Uh, who was that Lutz in the first quarter had six if he held on to the ball. And saw it on the other side, and Javier on defense as well for Exeter. McCusker, that's Nixon, and he's got a little room to run. Tripped up, still on his feet for about nine yards. Yeah, kind of hit the hole there and uh, around left guard and started to go left. Uh, and, you know, Obviously, the vision you see there, but it certainly seemed like as a you know parting of the Red Sea with the uh, with the middle of the Burks Catholic defense there. So this is the time as you know an offensive lineman, you got you know just you know bear down, kind of now take over the game. All right, third and about one. Nixon, that's who you knew was getting the ball. On the stop, number nine, That's Justin got the Stone. first down. And, and we're down to 832 back. here in the fourth quarter. Exeter Eagles up 10-0 over the Burks Catholic Saints and uh, well, you know, grinding it out here, putting together, you know, drive, taking time off the clock. Uh, definitely what uh, Exeter is looking to do. All right, McCusker. Looks like it's... Oh, and he had a trouble with the snap, and he's around the edge, and a nice, nice force out there coming up from the defense. That was number 21 again, Clayton Gibbs with the force out there. Gain of three yards, second down and seven. About second and seven here. You know, uh, Exeter taking time off the clock, not a bad thing, that's for sure. No. Nice job by McCusker playing shortstop there, fielding that low snap. You know, interesting right. fact with that, the, the center from last year, Brady, that has moved to uh, guard for this year. Strauss and Yoakum now in the backfield. There's Strauss. And a little bit of running room up the middle, but not a whole lot. The BC defense trying to rise up here and get the ball back. Yeah, no, they, they're certainly not rolling over. Um, you know, that was a good job of uh, just, you know, closing all the daylight that he had. Bringing up a third down here, looking at probably third and seven. I'll give them the, uh, the credit for where the forward progress ended. 7.34 left on the clock here in the fourth quarter. Looking at the sidelines for a play. And it looks like... I guess they're going to call some kind of a timeout here. They're just letting the clock run down. Yeah. Going to make sure that they've got the right call here. Third and five at the 46. Seven thirteen left here in the fourth quarter. 
Thanks to our buddy Daryl Tillman, Remax of Reading, the Scholastic Sports Realtor, for supporting this broadcast. All right, Kerry, third and five here. Uh, what do you think Exeter is going to do here? Any number of options. I mean, really, you know, uh, no point of putting it up in the air, you know, risking not taking, uh, you know, more time off the clock, you know, or an interception. Uh, you know, you've had a lot of success. You know, we'll see who they come at, back out with, but it looks like, you know, Ty Yoakum will be in again the block, and, uh, and I think we saw Strausser before the timeout was called. Um, and that looks like who it is again coming out, you know, at the running back position. Um, you know, keep it on the ground. All right, we'll see. Good news for the Redding Gritters Club. They're up 50-9 to nine over Kutztown right now. Got twins left, two guys up at the top. And Cusca rolling left. And incomplete pass there. Ty Yoakum out of the backfield and out of his hands brings up a fourth down here, fourth and five. Wow, Wilson 14 13 over Central Dauphin. End of the third quarter that was just announced here at the stadium. All right, 7 08 here. Remaining Exeter about ready to punt it away. Calvick, number two, Abdul, McFoy. Abdul McFoy, let's see if he can get loose maybe on a punt return carry. And nice kick there by Cupid. Out of bounds, not going to let McFoy beat him there to the 20 yard line. Out of bounds at the 20 yard line. First down and 10, Burks Catholic. All right, Burks Catholic ready to go here. Uh, it's kind of a big series dry, uh, time now, Kerry, with uh, 7 one to go. they got to show that they can move the football. Yeah, it's, this is really kind of a crucial point of the game now. you got to get down, get on the other side, get some points on the board. Seven minutes left. You know, when Exer gets the ball back, they're just going to you know, continue with that ground game and pound it out and try and you know, just take time off the clock. Um, it's really to the point now. It's, it's, it's crucial for the Burks Catholic offense to get something going. And there's Larkin around the end, and he's got some room, and he is going! Nolan Larkin down the sidelines! Nobody's going to catch him! That's 80 yards! Nolan Larkin for Burks Catholic! Well, there's our first big play of the game, Bruce, and that is absolutely zero surprise to me. Again, being here at the scrimmage uh, you know, with Governor Mifflin, uh, I said earlier in this broadcast, that young man has wheels, and uh, when he turns the corner, yeah, he's not going to be caught. Also, uh, you know, track and field athlete, athlete here at Burks Catholic, and, uh, you know, early in the game, I said, who are going to be the guys that are going to step up here to be the playmakers, and uh, that young man just stepped up as a playmaker. That brought the announcers to their feet uh, on that play. Oh, snap, down, kick. And he got it through somehow, Zavala. <laughs> Great effort by the holder there. Just that quick, 10 to seven now, Exeter over Burks Catholic, 6.49 left. Boy, this crowd sure got uh, alive real fast, Kerry. No, absolutely, and again, can't say enough about that run there by Nolan Larkin. Uh, he's a junior this year, and, you know, limited action last year as a sophomore. Um, you know, he's coming in and putting his, uh, putting his stamp on uh, wanting to be one of the guys that can be counted on here by this uh, Burks Catholic team for this season. All right, 6.49 left. Boy, that sideline is fired up there for Burks Catholic. So now really the story is, uh, you know, Exeter Township's going to get the ball back here. They're going to be able to put a drive together and take the time off the clock. Uh, the last thing they would need is a, a three and out and, you know, uh, put that ball back uh, in the hands of the Burks Catholic off offense. BC, Zavala. All right, Zavala's had a great kicking night. Yeah, we saw all Set the points. Set the kickoff. 
all the points scored by Exeter in the first half, you know, with the, the early touchdown, adding the field goal. Sitting here with 6.49 left in the fourth quarter. Exeter Township 10 and the Brooks Catholic Saints 7. And the new spot, number 23, Devon. And that's back to the side there. I think that's number 44, and he is just hammered. Nowhere to go. That was actually number 41, Nick Schaefer on the return. Well, definitely Aaron G has, uh, you know, Aaron this side of the field, the, uh, the players, the fans. Um, see what Burks Catholic can do on defense here if they can rise up and uh, get a stop. 6.43 left. Exeter ball on their own 25-yard line, leading 10 to 7. Remember, they're still leading here, gang. And the illuminated down marker on the far side says it's first and 10. Looks like they've got Alex Javier in there. Alex Javier in a quarterback. And they're just running up the side, and he does break free, but not for very much. No, that that's... play got stopped. That was Lutz again in the backfield. Yeah, number one, you know, Lincoln Lutz has just done a great job coming in, blowing up things in the backfield, and you know, blowing up things before they even get started. All right, it's a loss of one, second and 11. They're on their own 24-yard line. Still leading 10 to seven, 6-10 to go. McCusker back at quarterback. He's handing to Nixon, and he doesn't get a whole lot either. Maybe a gain of about three. It's gonna be third and long, Kerry. All right, so you know, here you go. You, know, you make the call at home, what are you gonna do here? You know, you're, you're sitting with a third and long. You're going to keep the, the ball on the ground. You know, hope to grind it out, get the first down. You risk putting it up in the air and, you know, possibly, uh, you know, having a quick turnover with it. So it looks like we're going to twins down below here on the right. We've got Nikowski and uh, Dylan Scott. All right, McCusker. Nick Sant lone back swinging out And here he's right. under pressure, chasing him down, and incomplete. Wow. Really under pressure there by number 30. That was uh, Aiden Gallon. Burke's Catholic defense did what, what, what exactly what we said they needed to do. They needed to come up big. Now, again, you know, we still got fourth down coming up here. You know, we anticipate the punt. You know, uh, it's really, you know, just a ball security now at this point. No mistakes. And, you know, the, the reality is you're going to get the, uh, the ball. Close to midfield, and any kind of return, you could start on the Exeter side. Cupid kicking again. Nice kick down the sidelines, but out of bounds. We got a ball game, folks. 5-11 left here in the fourth quarter. BC's going to get the ball around the uh, 46. The children's home of Reading, part of the Imperium family of companies. We appreciate Imperium. We appreciate all the support that they're doing for their broadcast this upcoming year. All right, Burks Catholic with the ball. Midfield. They're down 10-7 to, to Exeter. 5-11 to go. And is that Larkin again? It is, but not for a whole lot. Oh, man. Right in front of the ref. Yep. We got number two and number two being a little chippy with each other. Jeremiah Nixon for Exeter and, uh, you know, Abdul McCoy for, uh, for BC. So uh, with the spot there with the uh, punt going out of bounds, BC started on the uh, the 49. Uh, looks like they've lost a yard or two here. Balls down to about the uh, 47 and a half, 48 on the Burks Catholic side of the field. Second down, 13. Let's see what Madrick can do. He's back to pass, going deep. 
And, uh, you know, you really don't want, don't want to throw it Alex Javier's direction tonight. He had that smothered all the way. Looks like he was going for Caccioni. Yeah, Beth Caccioni and uh, Javier were both just uh, kind of waiting for the, the ball to come. Third and 13 for Burks Catholic. 419 and left here in the fourth quarter. Big play for Burks Catholic. Ball's in the middle of the field. Going to be interesting to call here now. Colby Newton behind Madrick. They give it to McFoy on the sweep. And he gets free down the sidelines. Abdul McFoy, touchdown, Burks Catholic. 52 yards. I don't know how he got down the sidelines. Incredible. Wow. So the story really all night has been, you know, Exer's defense, you know, through three and a half quarters, you know, <laughs> just not letting Burks Catholic around the edge. Two, two series back to back here. We see Larkin go 80. We see McFoy go 52. And, um, you know, just it's, it's a whole new ball game now. It totally looked like he was hemmed in across, uh, down the sidelines, and somehow he made it through there. I don't know how. Well, again, you know, the ball was in the middle of the field. They had both sides to work with, and McFoy just had enough daylight up that right side. I mean, he went out there like a shot out of a can, and the extra point is good. I don't know who the holder is for Burks Catholic there, but he's done a tremendous job tonight. Wow. So now you I got believe that was number five. John Burke. So we got four minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Exeter has to score a touchdown. You know, it's 14-10. It's All they're scoring in the first <laughs> half with a touchdown and a field goal. Back-to-back -back plays here. Burke's Catholic finally gets outside. Larkin, you know, 80-plus. Then we see McFoy, 50-plus, and uh, taking the lead. Back-to-back -back series. Got the corner, got outside. Yeah, the Exeter time. shut it down the whole first half. You know, two, a quarter and a half here in, in the fourth, and now two two series back to back. Burks Catholic gets outside and takes it to the house. Uh, this game, I, I just cannot believe how quick it's turned. Very, very exciting. Well, you know, uh, again, it was, you know, when was McFoy going to break one? You know, Larkin was the first guy that, that did it for BC. Come back, you know, one-two punch there with McFoy. Uh, let's see what Exeter has. Do they have an answer? They've got to score a touchdown. Let's see what they've got left in the tank. Alex Zavala. Ready to kick it off. High, not too deep. That's Scott at about the 15-yard line, and he's free up to about the 31, 32-yard line. Somebody has got in, shot across there, got a hand on the ankle. Is enough to trip him up. I think I think that was uh, Andrew McConnell, number 24. And number 16, Robert Hughes. Okay. Wow. First and 10. <laughs> Boy, deep breath there. ball. It's on their own 31. In the last two minutes and 40 seconds, Burks Catholics had 133 total yards and 14 points. Ball resting at the 31-yard line. It looks like they've got uh, Alex Javier there in the Wildcat. And he's going off the left side looking for some room. He's got the edge for about five. Still a nice job by Burke's Catholic defense there, stringing it out, not letting them put that foot in the ground, turn it up, got the corner. Gain of five yards. Okay, so we're going to have the ball here on the left hash, so the wide side of the field's to the right. See what Exeter does this time. All right, second down and 10 now. Still looks, Excuse me, second and five from the 37. Still looks like Javier in at quarterback, Nixon in at running back, single back set. Two receivers down here to the right. And the penalty. I almost forgot about those flags for a few minutes. Yeah, we, uh, it had been a few minutes since the last call. Looks like it's going to be on Burks Catholic this time. Offside, Burks Catholic. Encroachment on the defense. 
Okay, now it's both time, both sides here. Just you know, be smart. Can't afford those uh, those little miscues. All right. Both sides, you know, make the other team beat you. Don't beat yourself. All right, first and ten here now. The forty-two and a half yard line. Three fifty-three to go. Burke's Catholic now on top, fourteen to ten. McCusker, he's being chased by Lutz. He's throwing deep, and he's got Javier down to about the 18, or excuse me, the 30-yard line. Off balance, just kind of threw it up. Javier pulled it down. On the stop, number nine, Justin So now we're seeing the, uh, you know, the playmakers coming in to make some plays. Uh, Abdul McFoy, last series here for Burks Catholic. Javier coming down with the... Big, huge, huge First reception for Exeter. First and 10, balls, balls on the 30. They are in business. Three, 29 and counting left in this ball game. Exeter needs a touchdown, field goal won't do it. And that's Javier and he is hemmed in and he's taken down for a loss. That Burke that Catholic is, defense, three guys through with penetration. That's Lincoln Lutz. All right, second and 11 now. Ball on the 31. Lincoln Lutz has been a playmaker on defense for Burke Catholic tonight. He sure has. I mean, that's a, at least four tackles for loss that come right to, you know, just. Nixon, nothing. That Burke's Catholic defense has really risen up in the second half, guys. They've not allowed any points so far for Exeter and given the offense an opportunity to bring this team back. Well, really, for Exeter's second half, it's been that one big pass play to Javier has really been the, the extent of their offense. Third and 11. Here we go. This place is alive. 2.15 left. Third and 11, McCusker throwing outside. He's got Scott down the sideline. Did he get the first down? I don't think so. Uh, kind of turn and run and fell. Reception by number 23, Devon Scott. Fourth down. Fourth, fourth down. down. And a timeout. Fourth down so I think three. that's the second timeout for Exeter. They'll we'll have one left after this. We're under two minutes. So we got 155 left in this uh, ball game here in the fourth quarter of Burks Catholic. Thank you so much to Redding Alloys who underwrites this BCTV Friday night football broadcast. Redding Alloys out in Robazonia, lots of good jobs available. Give them a call. All right, guys. I mean, uh, <laughs> Not to really bring it up openly, but we got to figure out uh, who the MVP of the game is here pretty quick, too. Well, and uh, you know, are we going to have someone else rise up here? You know, of course, uh, you know, scoring in the first half by uh, Exeter. Fourth, down and three. Fourth and three. This could be the ball game. This crowd is alive here at the Farina Sports Complex. 155 to go. Fourth and three for Exeter. Oh, Javier jumped. Wow. Oh boy. Boy, these penalties if Exeter goes down is gonna be something that they'll look back at. All right, fourth and eight, uh, you need a touchdown. Yep. Field goal's not going to do it. You got to go. You know, you can still play a room to get the first down without the touchdown, but. McCusker, and he's got down to the goal line there. That's number 88, Jonathan Oberholzer. Inside the 10-yard line. Junior tight end coming up big there. 
148 left in this game. Incredible. First down and goal. First and goal from the nine. McCusker now. Ball resting at the nine yard line. Rolling right, and it's caught, but for no gain, really. That was Oberholzer again, and he's down. On the reception, number 88, Jonathan Oberholzer. 134 Pass left. Was incomplete. Burke's Catholic up 14 to 10. They need a touchdown to win it. Well, we all know how this is going to shake out, Bruce, but, uh, you know, regardless, we're coming right down to the wire here. Couldn't have asked for a, a better game for our opening game here on uh, bringing uh, football back to cable TV here in Berks, uh, Berks County on BCTV. Absolutely right, Kerry. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm so happy that the fans of Berks County had an opportunity to watch this game. We're so privileged to have the opportunity to bring this to everybody. You know, this is community television. This is a community effort. And, uh, you know, we really appreciate everyone, uh, Heather Adams, especially at, uh, the executive director of BCTV, who's uh, been behind this project Second from the get-go. So here we go, Kerry. 134 left. Second and nine. Cusker at quarterback. Nixon in his backfield there. He's looking left, he's looking for Javier, he doesn't see him, he's being chased, and it's incomplete! Oh, he had Nixon open and he missed him there. Pass is incomplete. Third Down to 128, third and nine. Yeah, no, they, yeah. number uh, 44 there, C.J. Carwell, in hot pursuit. Cusker never really had time to you know, set and uh, get a good ball out. <laughs> Third down and nine. Doesn't get much left. Doesn't get much better than this, guys. McCusker now. Back to throw. Can't find anybody open. He's scrambling, looking, looking, looking. He's trying to run it himself, and he stopped short of the goal line at the four-yard line. Clock continues to run with 1.15 to go in the game. It's going to be fourth down. They need a touchdown to win. They've got timeouts left. I'm surprised they're not using one here. On the tackle, ball carrier was number four, Gavin McCusker. Nice job by Gavin McCusker. You know, ball security, trying to make a football play again. Positive yards, going for the end zone. Uh, looks like the, I'm guessing Coach Bauer is going to let this run down and take the timeout and make it a one-play game. Oh, my. Well, I tell you what. <laughs> I can't believe it comes down to the final play on our first BCTV Friday Night Football broadcast, guys. It doesn't get any better than this, does it? Incredible. No voice. Fourth down. Got to love it. Okay. So you, you still got 37.7 ticks left on this clock. You know, it, it's going to be a decisive moment here. Either, you know, Exeter needs a touchdown. They're either going to score a touchdown or BC's going to stop them. Now, if Exeter does get the touchdown here, you know, you're looking at, you know, they will have to at least kick to Burke's Catholic. But, oh, wow. 37.7 clicks left here in the fourth quarter. The home team, the Burke's Catholic Saints, up 14 to 10 over uh, visiting Exeter Eagles. And uh, here we go. Here we go, gang. Fourth down, fourth and four. Watch it unfold yourself. Alex Javier looks like he's in the Wildcat at quarterback. He's got Nixon, and it looks like Burks Catholics call the timeout. Burks Catholic. Okay, the yeah. chess match continues, guys. You know, this isn't Coach Keeley's first go around. Obviously, you know, <laughs> Exeter had to play their hand there, you know, with their, their last time out of, you know, who are you bringing out personnel-wise on the field? So now we'll see. Will they bring Javier back out again, the Wildcat, go back to McCusker? <laughs> good, good analysis there, Kerry. I mean, absolutely dead on. Uh, 
you know, Coach Rick Keeley calling the timeout there. <laughs> I'd love to be able to hear what's going on in that huddle right now, that's for sure. You know, and again, I think you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, one of the storylines here in, in, in Berks County. When you look at, you know, I mean, you know, this is his 11th year for, you know, Coach Bauer with Exer, but, you know, Coach Keeley has just been around forever, you know, and uh, what he's done with this BC program since, you know, Central Catholic and Holy Name have uh, merged together. And it all comes down to this. These two teams have battled it out. Comes really down to this final play. Now they got McCusker back in there at quarterback. And he's looking left. He's looking for Javier. And it's incomplete. 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 Burks Catholic as hell. It looks like he was going across the middle there to Alex Javier. And it was knocked away. Burks Catholic's going to come out with the win tonight. Just oh wow, Bruce. Again, the chess match, they come out. You think you're going to get the Wildcat, you know, with, with Javier. Berks Catholic calls the timeout. They come back with McCusker, a quarterback. Incredible. Incredible. I like Lux. I like Lux. I like Lux. And we're just letting you soak it all in here as the final ticks go off. What an incredible game from Burke's Catholic Stadium. Seven seconds left on the clock. All the scoring done by Exeter in the first half. The touchdown and the field goal. Burke's Catholic comes back. Larkin with the 80 yarder. McFoy with over 50 yarder and uh, <laughs> put up those two touchdowns and uh, we're final here at Burke's Catholic High School. Final score, Burke's Catholic Saints 14, Exeter Eagles 10. It's really a story of two halves. Please stay with us. We're going to have our presentation coming up of our player of the game with our game ball, our customized game ball by the ball girl. Both teams going across the field, uh, you know, shaking hands and uh, really, wow, what a, what a story here this opening week, uh, first week of uh, high school in, in, in Pennsylvania again, and what an incredible game that we had here back on uh, cable TV in Berks County. Of course, it's streamed as well, and uh, our game will be, you know, archived, and you can go back and watch anytime on YouTube, but, uh, you know, uh, a lot of fight both sides as we went through this game and uh, just an incredible comeback by Burke's Catholic, never uh, never giving up, being resilient, uh, putting those uh, two touchdowns up here in the second half and, uh, you know, coming out on top 14-10. And, uh, you know, really when you look at it, I think uh, a big story here too is uh, the Burke's Catholic defense coming up big when they need to come up big. And... Uh, you know, again, story of two halves. You know, Exeter, 10, uh, 10 points in the first half. Burks Catholic comes back with those 14 in the second half and uh, walks away with the uh, opening week and home win here uh, here at Burks Catholic High School in Rain, Pennsylvania. So some interesting stats here, um, you know, as we're, we're kind of looking back on the game, Burke's Catholic had no passing yards in this contest, ended up with 189 rushing yards. And that was on 32 carries. And 
when you look at Exeter, you know, really led with the uh, the time of possession, you know, in this game. But Burke's Catholic again broke those two big plays, uh, you know, and that was a difference. You know, both the teams down the field, to meeting with their coaching staffs now, you know, uh, getting some reflection back on this game. My broadcast partner, our play-by-play -play guy, Bruce Badgley, is uh, making his way down the sideline. Uh, to do our presentation of our game ball uh, by the ball girl. Uh, we have our customized game balls for player of the game for each week. Um, and uh, we'll have that shortly after the teams break from their, their huddles here. Burke's Catholic, well represented here tonight in the stands and uh, the, uh, the student section, their theme for tonight was uh, going Hawaiian and uh, they're all down on the track um, waiting to celebrate with their their classmates, the Burke Catholic football team. What an incredible night for football! Great way to start the season. Uh, you know, not only uh, you know for for us here at uh, BCTV, but um, you know to start things up in Burke's County to have a game that was you know this thrilling that went down to the wire. Um, you know, just incredible. So Exeter Eagles starting to make their way off the field. Uh, you know, hats off to them. Uh, you know, they played hard this whole game. Uh, saw some real positive stuff, you know, from them early on. Uh, you know, the miscues, you know, there were a lot of, uh, a lot of penalties, um, you know, procedural types of things before the snap. Obviously, you know, talked about earlier, only having that one one scrimmage now in, in Pennsylvania, you know, you got to kind of start to work the bugs out early. Uh, so, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll come back. They'll work on those things this week. And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll come out better each and every week, uh, as most of our teams will here after week one. Um, you know, but uh, nothing to be ashamed of. Hard fought game. Uh, both teams, you know, just just played their hearts out to the end. You know, when it comes down to, you uh, you know, a, a fourth and goal. And, uh, but, you know, the story really is the, uh, again, two big plays on offense for uh, Burke's Catholic. They were kind of getting stymied, getting outside all night. Back to back series, we see, you know, Larkin with the 80 yarder, um, you know, around the end. And then uh, next series, uh, Dylan McFoy coming back with a 50 plus. Uh, you know, around the other end, uh, and that's those two plays were really the, you know, the the big bright spots for the Burks Catholic offense tonight. Uh, but it got the job done. Two touchdowns on the board. Uh, you know, Exeter had that touchdown and a field goal in the first half. Me. And uh, you know, um, again, but I really think you got to take a look at this too. Uh, you know, defensively. Uh, you know, Burks Catholic really sold in, and the amount of uh, times that they were uh, playing on the other side of the ball, playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage, and uh, you know, blowing up, uh, you know, what Exeter was trying to do, uh, you know, really. And as the game went on in the second half here, you know, really, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, helped uh, set the tone in the second half, and uh, they came up big on defense when they needed to come up big, especially you know, with that fourth and goal. Um, and, and Exeter's, uh, you know, last attempt to uh, get the ball into the end zone, you know, for the touchdown was needed. The uh, field goal wasn't going to do it being down 14-10. So, uh, you know, hats off to both of these squads. Uh, again, you know, coaching, uh, you know, staffs here, you know, and then looking, you know, Coach Bauer has been at Exeter, you know, 11 seasons. And, uh, you know, Coach Keeley, of course, you know, uh, you know, with his storied history here, you know, in Berks County, Berks County football. And, you uh, Burks Catholic coming out on top, you know, and looking at, you know, at the rest of the seasons, you know, of course, uh, you know, the Exeter Eagles, you know, 5A team, you know, always the expectation to make that playoffs in 5A, having to play that, you know, Burks Section 1 schedule. Of course, uh, you know, the 4A Burks Catholic Saints, you know, playing uh, in the uh, in Burks Section 2. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see the Saints again sometime this year. We're going to see the Eagles again uh, this year as well. Um, and we'll see how these teams progress and, and go throughout the rest of the season. But uh, the uh, the Exeter Eagles are off the field now, and we uh, we see the, the the student section from Burks Catholic has now migrated from the track out onto the field. And here comes uh, the <laughs> Burks Catholic football Saints, and uh, the uh, celebration uh, begins. All 
All right, shortly we're going to have the uh, presentation of our player of the game. Uh, and uh, a little foreshadowing here. Bruce is uh, getting ready to make that presentation. And we'll be taking you down to the field shortly. And uh, uh, I'll let you know it is a Burke's Catholic Saint. And uh, I'm going to take you down to the field for the presentation. Okay, Bruce Badgley here. I'm with our player of the game. This is the ball girl game ball presentation. The first one ever here on BCTV Friday Night Football. And it goes to Lincoln Lutz. Congratulations. Thank you. Great defensive effort out there tonight. You guys got down early, but that second half, you didn't let them have anything. Yeah, I'm stuck with it the entire game and kept grinding and pushing through. And we made plays. And that's what we have to do. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Enjoy that ball. Thank you. All right. Third down. And there we have it. We have our uh, first uh, game of this season under our belt. And, uh, you know, congratulations to the uh, Burst Catholic Saints and uh, their victory here tonight. Uh, again, 14-10 uh, to 10 victory, home victory uh, for the start of this season with uh, the Burks Catholic Saints coming out on top 14-10 over the Exeter Eagles. And I uh, hope you enjoyed our, our broadcast here on BCTV. Again, you can find us uh, anytime, uh, you know, archived on YouTube, and we put those links out on Twitter. And uh, we'll be back again next week, and we're going to be uh, taking a uh, uh, a trip a little north. We're going to have a representative from Berks uh, County. We're going to have the Y Missing Spartans visiting up to uh, Pottsville and the Tide.